Alrighty, ding dong, Donkey Kongs. We're doing this. I want to do this shit. This is what it is. You know what this is? Do you know what this is? Take a look at it. Yeah. All right. So this here, this right here, this right here, damn thing, is a rating by mains tier list. Now I say tier list, but it's not going to be like an S, A, B, C, D. What I want to do is I want to go through every single main I've had or attempted to have in games I actually put time into or tried to care about. And I want to put them into categories. Either I was good with them and enjoyed them or I didn't, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to make the tiers as we go because because I think there's a lot of variation between my feelings on these characters. Some characters I'm going to spend a lot more time on than others. So if one of your favorite characters only gets like three seconds, I apologize. They're dog shit. We're moving on. The answer is Popempin. You so right. Heavenly Potemkin. Busta. I heavenly Potemkin on her till she bust a nut. You did one a couple weeks ago. It was so fun going over past mains. Sick. Well, I'm looking forward to this. So speaking of past mains, our very first pick is Guilty Gear plus R, Soul Goodman. Now, the funny thing about this is he's actually more recent. Every time I play plus R, I, uh, for some reason, I pick Soul. <laughs> I don't, um... I don't have a lot of game time in plus R. Playing Dizzy and plus R feels extremely rough, so I just don't play her. Soul just feels super intuitive and very Lamauful. I love the idea of just Sidewinder over and over and over again. But again, I'm not good with him. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I drop combos every two seconds. So I'm gonna put him in a tier that says fun, but IDK, what's going on? I think that's a fair place to put him. Because I am definitely like by no means a soul main in any of the games I play in the sense that I'm like, I know exactly what I'm doing. I got like a general game plan with this dude. I run at you. If I see a button, I DP. If I get you in a corner, I press buttons and use specials until you fucking explode. And then I sidewinder you as much as I possibly can until the combo drops. <laughs> And I throw out random gun flames because I'm a savage. That is all that happens there. Now, when we say mains, there's gonna be there's gonna be some stuff that's not just fighting games in here. So you might be able to see this if I zoom in a bit. I don't know if you can see it. This is the screenshot from Digimon World 3. This is the Maniac Pack. Okay. Now the Maniac Pack is like your starter Pokemons. Are the packs are like your starter Pokemon? But instead of that, it's your starter team in Digimon World 3. There's a power pack, a balance pack, a maniac pack. The maniac pack is my let's call it like my go-to. This is my go-to comfort food. That's what we'll call it it's super reliable it gets the job done i have fond memories of it but i've never beaten the game with this nor was i the best when i used this specific pack as some of you know i've also played a little bit of Skullgirls. uh as of right now i've only clocked in 32 hours on steam i probably have another seven or eight on console so not a lot of time on Skullgirls, but i've put in some time I got a good feel for the game and <laughs> I would like to put Philia down in a lower tier. I'm going to call this. This is going to be the I tried to make it work, but they have forsaken me. This is the I tried to make it work, but they have forsaken me tier. This tier falls into a group of characters where it's like, listen, I like watching people play them. I like the way that they play. I like the idea of it. But for whatever reason, my smooth monkey brain just can't press the buttons right. It just doesn't work. And some of Philia, Philia's combo routes with the way uh, she needs to dan yeah. dash cancel her jump heavy kick, uh, among some other things, and her resets just don't vibe with me. So for that reason, she's going to have to sit a little bit lower. And unfortunately... It is what it is. Now, you're probably wondering who this goofy little furball is if you're not a Digimon fan. This is Dorumon. This isn't just any Dorumon. This is Dorumon from Digimon World 4. Digimon World 4 is one of the video games of all time. <laughs> Um, they went from having RPG Digimon games to a hack and slash, and it felt real bad, man. <laughs> Game was not the most fun. Um, <laughs> uh, this is going to have to get a whole ass new tier because this shit was something else. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Doramon was having a good time, and I for sure as fuck wasn't having a good time. I was happy to be playing Doramon, but holy fuck, dude, that game was rough. That game was rough as hell. So, I don't want to say too much more about Digimon World 4, because I, I got nothing nice to say except the music and the hub station. 
I guess. I don't know. Um, so this sprite is from Digimon Rumble Arena 1. Is what? No. Digimon Rumble Arena 2. I apologize. This is Vmon from D Digimon Rumble Arena 2. The reason I mained him in Digimon Rumble Arena 2 is really simple. Uh, he did evolved into Flame Dramon. And at the time, Flame Dramon was my most favorite Digimon of all time. And to me, just being able to play as Flame Dramon was sick. Sure, you could Digivolve again into Imperial Dramon, but I chose not to. I just did playthroughs as Flame Dramon and was happy. <laughs> like, that's how it was. Uh, so for that reason, he's go-to comfort food. I was never, like, really good with him or anything. I wasn't bad with him, wasn't good with him, but I did everything I needed to do, and that's really all that mattered. I unlocked all the content um, by playing all the other characters too, but that's that's kind of where, where he wound up. I did like using his little uh, his little dash move though. That was fun. Tasso played Terriermon and spammed Terrier Tornado in one and, and two. You played Black Agumon, Black Gabumon and spammed their side attacks. Yeah, the ice slide was pretty fun in the Black Gabumon. I remember that. Cause like <laughs> there was some uh, there was some silly little combos you could do with knocking people off the stage or like some of the hit stun or like freezing stuff. There was some toxic shit in Digimon Rumble Arena, so I'll tell you what. This pack here is the balanced pack. The balanced pack had Kodamon, Renamon, and uh, Patamon. Yeah, so this tier is the I was carried and had fun tier. There was almost no situation that I was completely, like, I was, I was prepared for everything with this pack. No matter where I went, no matter what I did, I never wiped, never had a problem. I didn't even know what I was fucking doing in the game. Adamon was sick as hell. And honestly, fucking Kodamon surprised me. Honestly, every time he evolved, I was like, oh, he just keeps getting sicker. Oh, he just keeps getting sicker. And I had no idea. You'll notice a theme with Renamon though as we as we move on. As far as Dragon Ball Fighters Android 21 goes, I want to make a new tier. Yeah, so Android 21 gets to go in the I didn't play the game enough, but this was super fun tier. Everything okay, first of all, turning people into food and eating them ever since the like Majin Buu OG, I've loved that concept. It's so goofy to me. Second of all, Monster Lady. Third of all. She had the pink and black aura shit going on, which was super sick. And then fourth of all, she was just really fun to pilot. Don't know enough about Dragon Ball Fighters to make like any in-depth commentary on the actual game itself, but damn, that shit felt good. There was a time where I played Pokemon Unite, and because of Pokemon Unite, I did spend some time on Pikachu because, uh, golly, this character was fucking stupid, chat. When I was playing Pokemon Unite, Pikachu was dumb busted. This is one of those characters you play it against and you're like, motherfucker, go touch some grass, please. I'm so tired of you just chaining your abilities and I instant fucking die. That's how it felt playing against them. That's how I imagine people felt playing against me because I would just blow them the fuck up every game. There was games that people would just straight up forfeit super early because I'd already be like four level gapping. It was actually insane actually despicable super fun character um some cool costumes but realistically i was just carried completely by their power actually fucking insane oh we have a first smash ultimate rep uh bowser <laughs> uh it was just like a go-to uh hmm actually i'm gonna make a, i'm gonna make a tier above this as well we're gonna call this we do a little trolling so when i say we do a little trolling i mean lamau we're just having fun whether or not we were good or bad or winning wasn't the point it's the point that we were having a lot of fun and that was bowser for me i loved using his flamethrower just like i used using charizard's flamethrower in smash 4 on the ledge so toxic and so much fun the side b was like whatever but being able to just armor through shit and then like oh they hit you on shield up b and you would just spin on them and they just go ah and they come attack you and you'd shield a perfect parry and spin on them and man it was so fun plus the drop kick and the move speed and his forward aerial like it was character was fun man he had a lot going for him there was definitely some like miserable matchups, but who fucking cares? You could literally crush those mashups if you just got in one hit. That's all you needed. <laughs> Bowser's so based, he's dumb fun. It's so true though. Then we've got our first Marvel versus Capcom 2 rep, uh, which is Morgan. Uh, I had fun with Morgan. I've yet to play Marvel versus Capcom 2 as a adult, but when I was in the arcades as a child, 
Morgan, I just remember shooting fucking cannons at people, little missiles at people, and zooming across the screen. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I was mashing buttons, and big sound effects were happening. The screen was flashing. Little Jimmy behind me was having a seizure. Dude had his fucking yankers out of his pants because this character was on the screen. I don't know. Shit was crazy, but it was a good time. And all I know is this dumbass succubus bat character was literally just fucking vroom, 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 vroom. it was nuts it was probably like my first real taste of an actual fighting game uh, and it was at a place that had go-karts and mini golf <laughs> and like really bad food and it was a great time so yeah thank you morgan for the experience that uh i look back on fondly now this is from uni one not uni two so unist um clr i believe this is wagner i want to put her in a new tier hold on i didn't play enough but it was i so the thing with wagner is she's like a semi stance character she could power up her sword with flames or her shield, or she can use her EX to do both. And she's kind of just unga bunga. She kind of just wants to rush you down, be all up in your shit and beat your ass. And honestly, when you're button mashing, that's a good time. That's a good time. Then I've told you guys before, I was never heavy into fighting games, right? I, I just wasn't. I really wasn't. But because of Bod Mark Chuckleberg, he, you know, got me playing some uni with him, uni one. And I tried some Batista and I tried some Wagner and, uh... I think I tried somebody else, but yeah, those, those two were like the ones I tried the most of. And it was, you know, it was a good fucking time. I can't complain. He would pull out the Mika and like XD raw all over me and like grab me and slime me on the ground. And I was like, word. And then he'd like circle jerking me on the corner and I would just die. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't, I didn't play enough of the game, but Wagner was definitely like, I, I wasn't complaining. I wasn't like super happy. I was just like, yeah, this is a good time. Character's probably not for me though. She's one of the most <laughs> characters I've ever played. Yeah. She's a straight fucking gorilla. You just hear ooh, ooh, ooh. every time somebody picks her on the character select, it's despicable. This is our first Digimon uh, World 2 and our last Digimon World 2 representative. It is Demi, Demi Devimon. And I'm going to put this motherfucker on. I was carried and had fun. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. In the beginning of Digimon World 2, I never felt like there was enough strong virus Pokemon right out the gate. Okay. There was virus Pokemon. But like, I'm talking like big bunga numbers or good effects right out the gate. For an early game virus Digimon, he carried my dumbass. There was plenty of like strong data and vaccine Digimon. But where the virus ones at? That's right, nowhere. You gotta fucking evolve them multiple times and de digivolve them to their fucking champions or DNAing with something else to create something else before they become truly useful. Sure, you can get like an early Hakurumon or get your Gazimon. Uh, to digivolve and like para and like whatever sure but like demi devimon really carried the early game and i really really enjoyed picking um the black sword for demi devimon as much as i could big fan of you thank you so much for the carries sorry i never beat the game moving on next is our first magic the gathering rep i will not be doing any modern or standard decks i'm only going to do my most memorable commander decks for when i play tabletop uh this is tashar uh, Apostle of something, I forgot. The Shard is basically an artifact deck. You can pitch a bunch of artifacts to the grave, basically get your artifacts in the graveyard and then cycle them really hard with Tashar and other cards on the field and hit a bunch of infinites. And honestly, it needs to also go up in I was carried and had fun. This deck was insane. Did it deal well with a lot of interaction? No. But could it get its game plan off really, really fast after being interacted with? Absolutely. Sure, you had some issues if you got targeted down, but that's any commander deck, right? There's only a few that are like truly resilient to like full on interaction. Tashara was not one of them, but it was a good time. It was a good time. My, uh, we actually had a time where I stopped playing Tashara because nobody had decks strong enough to keep up. And I was like, well, what's the point? So I stopped playing it and then I dumped it down. And then once some some people got some decks leveled up, we uh, we brought it back into the rotation. So for Overwatch 1 and uh, I guess Overwatch 2, we got we got Diva. Now, let's face it. <laughs> she's she's going to get her own tier, I think. Add row below to make this orange as well. Whoops. Make this orange. The reason I want to give her her own tier is because I feel like 
Diva hasn't always carried. Um, good old, good old, reliable. Good old reliable. I'll say Diva was also fun though. Diva was always fun, but she was always reliable for me. Uh, every time I picked Diva, every time I picked Diva, whether it was ranked, whether it was casual, unranked, it didn't really matter. I always felt like I contributed to the team. There was one meta where playing Diva felt like absolute dog shit, and even then, I still kind of made her work. Um, it's actually funny. I think during that meta when I did play, I think I was playing Roadhog of all characters. It was like an off tank pick if I remember correctly, but I usually didn't play tank when I did it was Diva. I was during dive comp with my team. But yeah, no, she uh, she's just fun, good aesthetic. Everybody likes her. We all know why. This is Grand Blue versus N versus Rising Cagliostro. Um, back in the original Grand Blue versus, I started with another character, then I went to Cag, and I pretty much just stayed there. Uh, I secondary the other character, but I never really good got good at Grand Blue versus. I think I only put like twenty, maybe thirty hours into it. I kind of just let it stay there. I mean, the delay base not code was rough for me. And I kind of started playing the game after I started having beef <laughs> with Guilty Gear Strive's matchmaking in that code. So I will say this though. I had uh I had I'm just gonna put another one below. I had fun. I definitely had fun with Cagliostro. I never felt carried by her. But I did feel like I had a lot of fun. There was never a day I booted up Grand Blue and I was like, man, fuck playing this character. This shit is miserable. Nope, always had fun. She's just a great bundle of joy and I wish more people would give her a shot, especially in the new game. Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising, I felt a bit more carried with her uh, in that. But still, I don't think she's like the most carried character ever. She's very good though. So this is BB Tag and I was fortunate enough to actually find a split uh with both batista and s because that's who i ran sometimes i ran my too but i'm gonna put her here i didn't play enough but it was super fun every time i play bb tag i'm like i should play this video game more i say that every time i say that about a lot of fighting games and playing batista and s or batista and my is uh really really fun i can't tell you enough about the mechanics of the game i just know i like both characters and being able to have them on the same team flying around the screen and shit is pretty fucking dope if you ask me um <laughs> narmaya i barely touched her in grand blue fantasy versus rising um but i did play her in grand blue versus and i'm gonna put her in the i tried to make it work but they have forsaken me tier the stance swap thing wasn't the issue, actually. You might think, oh, well, you couldn't handle the stance swap. And actually, I had my stance swap combos down. I was fine at stance swapping. But there was just something about her play style that didn't mesh with me, which is interesting because basically she has a teleport, right? She's got crazy dash. She's got projectile. Like She's got a lot of good things going for her, plus a meterless reversal. And she's got a good design. And for some reason, I just never really felt attached to the character. Every time I played her, I was like, man, I don't know, bro. Man, I don't know, bro. And that cycle continued until I switched to Kag in Grand Blue Versus. So, yeah, sorry, Normaya, but uh, you forsaken me and I moved on. Pretty simple. Oh, do we have our, we have a second Smash Ultimate rep. This is, ah, the damn, this is crazy. We got two of these in a row. Um, Corin or corn as i like to say i know i'm so quirky and unique ha 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 everybody calls her that um corn i wanted to main her so fucking bad i tried i kept going back to her i kept attempting it tempting it and i just kept failing like all the time that, like I, there was characters i was genuinely good with but every time i picked up corn there was people that i would beat easily that would just start beating me i just couldn't do it i couldn't fucking do it she did not play the way I wanted her to, and that always made my ass get uh, absolutely whooped. So, for that reason, she's going in the... I tried to make it work, but they had forsaken me tier. Uh, I'm not doing all the Digimon decks in a row. So, we got my first Digimon TCG deck. Uh, let's let's do Phoenixmon first. So, Phoenixmon I picked up in BT11, Dimensional Phase. 
and the Phoenix Mon uh, package wasn't good. <laughs> a lot of people were running Phoenix Mon on their top end alongside Mars Mon at that time to try and make it work. I did not. I ran Shukwao Mon and I sometimes ran, um, I did the Phoenix Mon. I did one of EX1 Phoenix Mon. I had Omni Mon Blitz. Um, and then sometimes I ran, uh, fuck, I forgot its name. Oh yeah, Shukwao. I already said that. But yeah, no, so I ran those just to try and make it work. A um, lot of support cards were in there. I had the Geo Greymon that would let you search your security. I had a Goonimon, the one that you can digivolve over your tamer as a hybrid, so you could swing in the same turn. I had, um, I'm trying to remember, there was even something I put in the ultimate line before Blast stuff was out. Yeah, so there's just like, there was a lot of stuff I ran just to make the package work. And it, it was still pretty rough. I'm not going to lie to you. But now that the deck's gotten even more support between, you know, Axe Antibody and, you know, the set before that where it was like the good, the better Phoenix Mon and all that fun stuff. And then their Blast Ace for Garudamon. The deck's good. Um, I still don't think it's going to be like a top tier or anything, but like tier one, tier zero. But I have fun. Every time I play Phoenix Mon, I have fun. I'm not a red player in Digimon. Let's face it. I don't play red. Not a red player, but I like Phoenix Mon enough and I like um, like Akiho's design enough. I like a lot of the other stuff that the deck's just fun for me. It's actually one of my only max rarity decks. I have a couple, but that's that's one of my only ones. And unfortunately, I don't have the X antibody stuff IRL right now. I've just been playing it on the sim. So, yeah, for that reason, it's in the I had fun tier. Moving on, we've got Smash 4 Charizard. Oh, hey, here it is. I've been waiting to do this tier. Um, now, this tier is going to be a tier completely separate on its own. This is the they were my were my main. OK, this is one of those like this was my character doesn't matter. Uh, if they, you know, it doesn't matter. I always came back to them, but I'm going to separate this into two tiers. They were my main, I carried, and then I'm going to do one that's, they were my main, they carried and Charizard and smash four. If you guys played smash four, uh, you probably heard of like Bayonetta, right? Diddy Kong, uh, cloud, <laughs> you never heard about Charizard. I carried this motherfucker. All right. I'm the one that got out of pools. I'm the one that made it to top eights. I'm the one that labbed and grinded for hours. I'm the one that would hit confirm jab into upbeat. I'm the one that trapped, uh, did ledge trapping perfectly. I'm the one that spaced my bears every single time. I'm the one that learned how to misspace your bear on purpose so you'd get the the knockdown closer to you so you could use a um like a 50-50 down uh down smash or side B on their roller attack. I did that shit. Charizard made me work for it. Every single stalk I took was a blood filled battle. But you know what? I never gave up on Charizard. I never gave up on him. Is Charizard my favorite Pokemon? Not even by a long shot. Why was I so attached to this stupid fucking dragon wannabe? I don't know, but you know what? That was my boy. We went through it together. We went through it together. All right, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll never forgive him for that. <laughs> Shit was hard as hell, man. I wanted to cry. Uh, let's, do, let's do purple for this. That's fine. You'll never forget about Bayonetta. Yeah, it's literally impossible to. It was so bad that they memed on stage. Anyways, um, let's talk Unist 2. This is this is going to be an easy one. I didn't play enough, but Eltnum is super fun, dude. I need to play more Unist 2. Every time I play that game, I have a ball of a time. I love playing this character. Dude, she's got a... She, okay, first of all, she's got a whip and a gun. All right, she's Indiana Jones, which is already fucking hilarious. And then she's got like a big fuck off beam she can shoot with her gun where she like wraps her whip down to the... Whoosh, she whips her whip down to the ground and she just... Shoot a, it's fucking sick as hell. Have I tried Izuki yet? No, because I'm afraid I'll fall in love with the character and then I'll take time away from Strive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real. So, all right. We all know Dizzy and Strive isn't out yet, right? We know they're not out, right? But I think it's fair to say I could put them in either of these tiers, right? They are my main capital M A I N, right? We know this. I mean, I'm the dumbass motherfucker with the wear Dizzy though tag for two and a half years. I think it's okay to put them in one of these tiers. I don't know which one they're going to go in. I want to put them in this tier because I want to speak into existence that they're going to be top tier and they're going to carry me. Right? So I'm going to put them in the, they were my main, they carried. They're not even out yet, but I'm, spe I'm, I'm calling it right now. They're going to be grossly overpowered. They'll drop everything for Dizzy. Real. <laughs> Zelda music. La Zelda. <laughs> True. Um, next up, we have our first Monster Hunter World Dual Blades. Uh, Monster, Herald, Monster Hunter World rep with dual blades. Yes, Brain. Thank you very much. I'm going to put this under I didn't play enough, but super fun. All right. Are you a hack and slash enthusiast? <laughs> Do you like Dynasty Warrior? Do you like to see the damage numbers pop up frequently and often, occasionally critting for the bigger number? Do you like zooming around the stage and being an anime weeaboo who can flash through the skies and scare, jump scare any monster within a 10 foot radius? Make it like two feet because you have no fucking range. Well then, boy, do I have a class for you. Wacha! Dual blades. There's even a fucking meter, right? That you can just like pay attention to. It's a great time. I love dual blades, man. Great time. You were never able to play dual blades. Great sword, big damage, corrupted your brain. I love great sword too, but I didn't put enough time into it to call it like, you know, when I actually really played, played. Alrighty. Oh, this is super appropriate. Okay. So for my very first smite rep, that's going to be the very first character I mained on PC. Now, I did main uh, Kepri on console, Kefri, but I don't think I'm good enough with them anymore. You put him as a main. Jingwei uh, needs to go up to... I had fun. J there was a time where Jingwei was pretty good, um, but I largely played Arena. I didn't really play much else. So her whole ability to fly out of the starting zone and get into the battle quicker wasn't as important. So the damage drop off she got from like sacrificing, you know, damage and stats or whatever because of her abilities didn't really matter as much. I played her mostly as a harasser. I'd get the attention on me and then like, you know, my tanks and assassins and shit would go do their job. I had a good time. I had a good time. I don't think she's the was super broken or anything and then after some of the changes she kind of got a little nerfed but yeah no it was a good time she uh she was the first character i ever max ranked or got to level 10 right so yeah no big big fan big fan of the the jingwei uh we're gonna come back to smite let's go to our first and only Yu-Gi-Oh rep this is dragon maids okay dragon maids is my main and i carried this deck is by far not a top tier. <laughs> it, is, it is not a real deck. If you go to your LGS and you're like, yeah, I want to build Dragon Maids, they're going to look at you and be like, be ready for pain. Be ready for pain. So when I played Master Duel, um, this is what I ran. I do still plan to build this in paper one day. I just don't know when. Um, between the aesthetic and the way it plays, I think it's pretty fun. Uh, it just... For the current meta and how Yu-Gi-Oh plays today, it, it, please don't play this deck. Do yourself a favor, play literally anything else. <laughs> Go watch Yu-Gi-Oh players and see what they're playing. Please, I'm begging you. Don't play this shit. Don't play this shit. Please don't play this shit. You will actually fucking cry. The deck is so ass, but my god, it's the only deck you played. <laughs> Listen, listen, sometimes, you know, you just got to roll with the punches, even if it's you losing all of your MR in one day. <laughs> like, whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Um, All right. BBCF, Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Um, This is S. <laughs> she was super fun, but I did not play enough. Character is super, super fun. Every time I go back, I'm going to play this character. I think they are an absolute joy to play. Um, I don't think they're more fun than BB tag, but they are super, super fun. So I'll put them here. I don't want to rehash the, the S conversation too much. So we're going to move on. 
Uh, okay. Let's do... This is King from Tekken 7. I did not play enough of this game, um, but it was alright. I, I I like Tekken. I like watching Tekken, especially Tekken 7. Tekken 8, I've kind of has lost its luster for me a little bit. Um, I still like Tekken. I think it's great, but uh, I didn't like playing King in Tekken 8. But Tekken 7, he was he was a pretty good time. Uh, big fan of some of his buttons. Yeah, I don't know. It was all right, man. The grappling was fine. The instant shining wizard was a great time. I like doing that mid combo. Other than that, though, I don't know. It was all right. Uh, next on the list, we have Final Fantasy XIV Monk. It is I started with Pugilist in Final Fantasy XIV, and um, now I'm at Monk. And you know what? It's uh, it's pretty fun. They were my main. They were my ride or die. They still are. I'm probably gonna wind up like as my physical DPS. It is my main, and it carries. It's really really good. It does everything I want it to, except uh, when I have to wait and do nothing for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> But no, 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 it's a really good time. It's a really good time. They, I think this class will always have a special place in my heart because it got me through ARR, A Realm Reborn. And I made, I, I made friends while playing this class. You know, I, I got through the story. There's always going to be a sentimental attachment to this class, even if I wind up not maining this class in the future, right? Because like right now I'm trying Red Mage for a bit. And then once I get to level 60, I'm going to try Dancer, right? I'm going to play Dancer for a little bit. And then I'm going to get Scholar and I'm going to play some Scholar for a bit. And then uh, decide which one I want to play as like my actual main once I do all that. But at least I'll have all that done and probably some point I'll get a tank. But yeah, no, really, really fun class. I love the idea of comboing my enemies, zipping around the screen. Um, powering myself up, keeping track of my stances. I think the stance thing is the most fun about it because you got to like really keep track of your shit. I don't know. Play Final Fantasy 14. Um, Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising. Beatrix. Uh, I was carried and I had fun. This is by far one of the most fun characters in all of Grand Blue right now. I know that she got nerfed. She's a little different, but she is still hella fun, dude. The unlimited swagger she has while hitting you with a soul far slash into a fucking bandit bringer is so funny, dude. It is so funny. And then her skybound arts do massive chunks of HP. If you are a big damage enjoyer, right? If big damage numbers make you go a wooga, this character is probably for you. There's also Siegfried and like, I don't know, near, but like, whatever, man, <laughs> just play, just play Beatrix. She's totally worth it. Next on our list, we have our first Honkai Star Rail character. This is Jing Liu. Uh, she is an ice type, uh, ice elemental character. And you got to remember, I haven't played in a while, but uh, every time I used her in, um, fuck is it, Memory of Chaos and all that fun stuff like the end game content. She did big fucking numbers. I saved up rolls for her. I spent money for her. It was a good time. Very strong character. Does a lot of damage. And with a team that I built around her, everybody was speed tuned. So like everything was perfect. Dude, character is so much fun. And her little her little stance change or she like takes off her blindfold and fucking mercs everything in sight. Good time. Good fucking time. Um, Next on the list, let's do our first Guilty Gear rep. I tried maining Leo White Fang, uh, White Fang and Guilty Gear Strive, but turns out Leo just wasn't for me, man. I'll still play him for time to time. I like the stance swap where he goes into back turn and you dash back and forth <clears throat> and you swap sides with your enemy. You know, the high lows, the left rights. It was, I don't know. I didn't play enough of Leo, but it was all right. I don't think I've ever once played Leo and been like this shit super, super fun. But some of his combo routes are really satisfying and his ability to just like dominate in neutral feels pretty good too. Moving on. I want to do my next Digimon deck here. And I want to talk about the very first Digimon deck I ever bought. I actually got the Mastmon starter deck, the structure deck, and my roommate got the Imperial Dramon one. And honestly, I've kept it pretty much updated all the way through until BT post BT 11 and then I stopped updating it 
Um, I will be updating this now that more stuff has come out for it. But as of right now, I'm just going to have to put it in the I had fun tier. By the time I got into Digimon, this wasn't super strong. Uh, it was still reliable. You could still use it to win, but it wasn't, I don't know. I liked it. I got my Ordinimon and all that stuff. It was a good time. I think what I really enjoyed most about it was sometimes I get down to like two security shields from my starting five. And then I just like DNA Digivolve and Lamau all of a sudden had like eight shields. And I was like, what the fuck is happening, bro? <laughs> they did all this work. I blew up their board and now my security is maxed out. It's not actually maxed out, but yeah. Anyhow, super good time. Let's do our next uh, Smash Ultimate rep, Mithra Pyra. I fucking adored playing this character and they totally carried me. Totally carried me. Character's just really good, man. I don't I don't know if they're still considered really good or if they're top tier, low tier, mid tier. I have no idea where they stand on the tier charts. I don't play Smash Ultimate anymore, but I loved playing this character. I had Smash Ultimate. I had the biggest character crisis moment I've ever had in any fighting game, any video game ever. I had a very, very hard time finding a main. And even I thought Sora was going to be my main for real, for real. But even after they came out, I found myself coming back to this character. Um, just like as a whole, I never got good with them. Like I got good with some other characters, but I didn't really need to, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I enjoyed using the switches mid fight. And it was just it was just a really, really good time. Uh, Mod Mark Shuckleberg can tell you how much they loved fighting against this character. I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Next up, we got the hunting horn in uh, Monster Hunter World. I did not play enough of this, but oh my god, slapping the base in the monster's face while they're getting fucking shredded by your team and you're buffing your team and stuff is so satisfying. I could literally be the worst player on the, the worst player in the party in the hunting party. I can have the worst gear, be the worst player, and I'm still providing valuable, valuable plays. And that's awesome. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in the... I didn't play enough, but it was super fun. Very rewarding class. I think it's time to do Narumiha and Magic the Gathering. I'm trying to remember what else did I have for Magic the Gathering. Yeah. This deck here... Uh, mm. man this is tough this is, yeah this is a tough one so this deck is a blue deck you run some counters but basically what you're doing is you're casting narumiha to flicker things so you bounce them off the field and bring them back and there's cards that make it so you can infinitely as many times as you want bounce narumiha plus that spell back and forth back and forth back and forth to achieve great results it can give you infinite enter the battlefield triggers or etbs it can give you infinite mana off your lands it can give you infinite tokens like there's just a lot of things you can get off of it however it, i wouldn't say it's the most difficult deck to pilot it's not but if you don't understand how the stack works in Magic the Gathering and some of the more unique rules, you can fuck up your shit pretty hard and actually fizzle your own combo. Um, so you have to be really wary of that. But generally speaking, it's not difficult and it's pretty fun. It's really rewarding to pilot. And it is relatively resilient against bullshit because you're in blue. So anyways, I was carried. I had fun while I played it. I, I, it was my brainchild and then I realized other people were doing it and I was like, oh, I can steal their ideas too. How neat. Next, I want to do Omen from Valorant. Um, I played during a time where, yeah, I played during a time where Omen was not at his strongest, but I had so much fun playing Omen. I did not like Valorant as a whole. I thought the gunplay in Valorant was dog shit. I think RNG is just bad. I think it not being a movement shooter definitely weakened it, in my opinion. But the the, the idea of blinding people and teleporting all around to like fuck with them or burn time and kill them is so funny to me. Plus, having smokes always felt good. So for that reason, Omen can sit in the I had fun tier. 
I, I don't know. He's fine. He's fine. Um, okay. Next on the list is going to be my one and only Weiss Shore deck. This is the, the Aqua Axis Cult deck. It is uh, definitely not a tier one deck at all. It's kind of a, it's regarded as a meme deck, but it worked for me. It did good. It was my main deck. I mean, I had a re-zero deck I wanted to be my main deck, but at that point I stopped going to events. I stopped going to tournaments uh, and then COVID happened and, you know, things went sideways. So that was a bummer. But this deck, by and large, was my main deck. I ran some other stuff, but this was super, super fun. It wasn't great, but I got my wins with it, which is all that matters, right? Basically, in this card game, you have a card limit like most card games. You can run four copies of a card. And um, this deck allows you to run multiple copies of Axis Cult members. And you want to essentially run quite a few of them. And then when you get your top level card, this Aqua here, Furious Blow Aqua, you stick them underneath her to use its ability and, you know, deal more damage. So, I don't know. It was a good time. It was really, really funny. It did one thing and it did one thing pretty subpar, but you know what? We loved it. Uh, next up on the list, I want to do a, another Smite character. Let's do Amaterasu. Amaterasu was... <laughs> I... I would say that I had, I had fun. Uh, yeah, I had fun more so than with Jingwei. Still haven't gotten Amaterasu to level 10. I mean, we've kind of dropped Smite right now because it still keeps crashing. I have to figure that out. Eventually I'll bring it back to rotation because I love Smite. But yeah, no, Amaterasu is a good time. I love building her with attack speed in the Hasten Blade so that whenever you attack somebody and hit them with a basic attack, your slow is removed. So you could just like zip around and like rotate them in circles and put them in the blender and just keep smacking them. There's a fun attack speed crit build. You can build her tanky. There's a lot of things you can do with her and she's just super fun across the board for that reason. And then after that, we've got Kai Kiesk from Guilty Gear Strive. Those of you that have been showing up to my streams know that Kai is a character that I just started playing. Um, they're not like they're not my main or anything. They're like a casual secondary that I'm working on. And I would like to say that they are <clears throat> a character that is fun and they do carry me. They are they have like they're not like a specialist character right they're the most vanilla of the shoutos like they got their dp they got a projectile with two forms they got a forward moving uh, two forward advancing moves lots of great anti-airs good pokes uh, a good 5k that actually hits low just an overall fun character <clears throat> that has a lot of tools i don't i don't foresee me maining this character in fact i don't even know if i would use him as a secondary in a tournament if i'm being honest I think it covers some of the bad matchups I have with another character, but I just don't foresee him being the one I rely on um, for everything. I think he's great for casuals, though, honestly. All right, who's next? We got... God, there's so many of these. Send help. Let's get Smash 4 done. So we got Smash 4 Yoshi. We start with Smash 4 Black Yoshi. Smash 4 Black Yoshi. Um, I'm going to put in... I'm putting good old reliable. So the reason I picked up Yoshi in Smash 4 when I already had Charizard is because I wanted a secondary to deal with some of the really bad matchups I had in bracket. And originally I was going to do Kirby, but Smash 4 Kirby was just super unfun to play for me. And then I could have done Cloud, but I didn't feel like playing a character with a sword. So I just went with Yoshi. I was like, fuck it. Let's stick with the, the lizard, the lizard thing. Right. Um, and, you know, I started with Black Yoshi and there came a point where a light went off in my head and people started to say my Yoshi was disgusting, despicable even. And I wound up actually pocketing Charizard, even though they were my main. I still used them. I had more time in on them, right? But my Yoshi became Yellow Yoshi. And Yellow Yoshi was fucking gross, dude. Um, I don't want to, like, I don't, at this point, I don't even know if I can say they were my main, but Yellow Yoshi, by that point, they legitimately became my, one of my mains. I spent about half the time on Yoshi, half the time on Charizard, and I could do all the gross things. I could wave bounce all my moves. 
I could do setups so that it would just like lump out. You're dead instantly. I had a couple zero to deaths. So it, it, <laughs> I carried that character though. They were they were in a game where there was a lot of sorties. There was Bayonetta. There was Diddy Kong. Yoshi was by no means top five. By no means. I don't even think they were top 10, honestly. So we were fighting for our life in a lot of matchups, but I was doing really, really good. And actually, um, I want to give a little spoiler. Back when I used to stream, I played a lot of Yoshi and Charizard on stream. And I had a I had a pretty pretty good following, and I did pretty good in some tournaments. So yeah. Anyways, fun fact, fun fact. You need to agree in Mon Mon starter deck so bad. Your only hope is that they suddenly appreciate DW three. There's a guy with Mon Mon and, Li and Liberator. Yeah, you're better off uh, waiting for the Liberator reveal for Mon Mon. I'm sorry. They're not gonna do a DW three release because they hate us. Um, next on the list, let's do our first King of Fighters rap. This is King of Fighters 15. Uh, I did not play enough, but King of Dinosaurs was all right. I actually wound up using King of Dinosaurs uh, to help beat a boss and do some single player content. Uh, I did play him online a little bit, but I basically just did the really, really scrubby shit with him. This was also before like, this was like right as I got into fighting games with Strive actually. And it was, it was all right. It was all right. I, he did big damage. I can tell you that much. Other than that, I'm not educated enough to say much. Blue yell, Lunamon. Yeah, I wish. Ugh, one day. Um, okay. Next up, we got Sakayama, Sakayami, Kum, Kum from Million Arthur Arcana Blood. This character, I don't give a fuck, dude. All right. This character, is, this character is like my main. If I ever go back to this game, this is my main. 100%. I shouldn't even say if I go back to it. Like, if I try to get good at Million Arthur Arcana Blood, this will be my main. And I want to put this, I didn't play enough, but super fun. Above Android 21. This character is so much fun. If they would put her in Guild Gear Strive, I, I actually may not play Dizzy. If Dizzy's not fun. Like, that's how fun they are to me. I really enjoy this character. I had a really good time with Mab. And if it was more active, I probably would spend a lot more time in the game. That's just where I'm at with that. If they just had a new fucking video game that have a lot more content to base their sets on. Yeah. If only. If only they actually put more time into their games so they could advertise better with their games. Digimon. Bandai. Bamco is fucking stupid. I don't know. I don't know what you want. It's Bamco, man. Uh, this is Ultimate Marvel versus three uh, Chun Li. Um, I, I I'm gonna make a new tier. At a row below. Oops. Let's do. Let's do. I liked the character, but disliked the game. Something about Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3, it just doesn't click with me, man. I have yet to have fun with that game. I like playing Chun-Li in the game. I just did not like the game. And that's that's what I'm going to leave it at. So, yeah, I like the character, but dislike the game for Chun-Li. I think, I, think I think that's probably super fair. Next up on the list, we got, I think, our last Monster Hunter world rep. It's Hammer. Hammer, I'm going to put in... Um, I didn't play enough, but it was I, but I'm gonna put it at the top of the list. So the only thing I liked about hammer was Beyblading and then like sliding off a legend Beyblading and jumping in the air. Other than that, I didn't like any of like the normal attacks at all. I just like the big spin. That, that's literally it. And that alone was enough to carry it for me for a while, but it couldn't carry me long term as far as like enjoyment wise. So for that reason, it's gonna go in. I didn't play enough, but it was I, because we did not play enough of Monster Hunter. Um. Okay, next up, let's do Arrivals of Aether rep. We got Ori and Sen. Um, I think this is also gonna have to go in. I didn't play enough, Was but was all right. I like the idea of setting up the, uh, the orb, right? And Ori had a cool design, but I don't know. 
I don't know if it was the game, the mechanics or what, but it was fine. I was like, all right, we're here. Things are fine. It never really felt like I was having a super good time or a super bad time. We were just gaming. We were pressing buttons. We were doing setups and that was about it. Yep. <laughs> I don't got much to say about that. We only put like 12 hours into the game, so that's where I was at. Jigglypuff in Smash Ultimate. Um, let me make a, another tier. Actually, I need to hold on. I need to move some of these around. Go to convert. This needs to go down here. I just didn't have. Uh, add below. Let's do this. Let's go here. This is going to be the. I only liked one thing about the character. There we go. Yeah, Jigglypuff was the. I don't know, man. I, I the dopamine hit from hitting a rest on somebody and killing them with the rat with the rest made me just deal with it and play the character. Other than that, though, I was not having fun. I was not having fun faring. I was not having fun doing uh, zero to death, carrying them off the screen. I was not having fun doing literally anything other than resting people. There was no reason to be playing this fucking character other than that. <laughs> and I did all of the things. So yeah, no, definitely that character was not for me. Yeah, not for me. Where this is like the, this is the, actually, I think Doru, hold on. Doru needs to go. I like the character, but dislike the game. We should have made this tier, this uh, tier earlier. I did like Doramon, but I did not like the game at all. We do a little trolling, should go higher. Appreciate the lurk, Nin Nin. Oh, is Ninin streamer? Uh oh yeah, they're still streaming. Why am I why am I tripping? Why am I tripping? I knew they were streaming. I mean Link and Soul Calibur? Absolutely. Had it on the GameCube and the PS2. I think I rented it on Xbox too. They should bring them back. I agree. That's gonna be hard to do though. Actually, I kinda wanna put we do a little trolling up by the uh good old reliable tier. And the reason for that is like, cause these are both positive things, right? Man, we got these kind of out of order, huh? I didn't play enough. So I like the character, just like the game. Go to comfort food should also go up. Yeah, hold on. We need to, we need to reorganize this shit. I kind of let shit get out of here. Fun by IDK, what's going on? Uh, I can go right below the, I didn't, well, hold on. Yeah, this is still like, I didn't play enough. Yeah, so this is like, Hold on. We got to reorganize really quick. Hold on, hold on. I like the character. Dislike the game. That's fine. I tried to make it work, but they've forsaken me. This is like... Yeah, this could stay here. I only like one thing about the character. We struggle busting through this shit together. This is going to be like, I like the character. This is like a, I like the character thing, right? Yeah, so this... This can go up here as well. Hold on. We got to reorganize this shit right now. Um, let's, let's add a row below. I wanted to wrap my controller cable around my neck. There we go. Let's wrap with those characters. Cause I already know they're fucking coming. I like the character. Just like the game. Try to make it work. They were sake of me. Okay. Uh, comfort food. Is good old reliable the same as comfort food? Hmm. No, it's not. I would say it's a little better than comfort food. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we are chilling. I'm going to do this so we know those kind of line up. Go to comfort food can be green. Uh. This can be, these can be like greens. Hold on. We're just updating this really quick because we kind of just were pressing buttons. Okay. On to the next one. The next character we've got is Byleth. Um, Byleth, I really did try to make work, but she was another one of those characters that just straight up forsaken me. Uh, I had fun sometimes, but then other times I was like, bro, what am I doing? And I would just like set my controller down and contemplate life. I'd stare outside, listen to the birds sing, 
And I was just like, hmm. Ah, yes. That down B was very shenasty. The kill off stage with the up B was pretty neat. But golly, that felt terrible. <laughs> that was like my entire pilot experience. Uh, Eliza? Elysia? I... Uh, this was a character that was my main. I had no idea what the fuck I was doing, but if they ever come back to Tekken, I will instantly lock the fuck in and play some Tekken. I won't main the game, but I will play some Tekken again for at least a week and we'll learn this character again. Liz is a peak. Oh, absolutely. She was so much fun. And she has the best design out of any Tekken character. Don't fucking at me. I don't give a shit. I <laughs> don't want to hear any arguments on that front. Looks cray. I mean, yeah, one of the first pieces of art I had commissioned of, uh, hold on. Let's, let's just, let's just take a look at something really quick. Cause I mean, let's take a look at something really quick. Okay. Let's just, let's have a conversation. We got, well, hold on, hold on. Don't, no, hold on, hold on. We're not done. We're not done. Take a, take, take, take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. Don't worry about nothing. All right. Just, uh, just, uh, here. Hold on. Just wait a second. We got, uh, this, this one less so, but you're going to, you're going to, you're going to see, you're going to see a little, you're going to see a little fucking, uh, a little thing going on here. A little, what's it called? A trend? Here, you're going to see a trend happening here. Okay. Ah, uh, that's okay. I, ha I had another one. There is a feeling that is elicited there, and I don't, I'm not sure what it is. All right, moving on. Yippee! I'm gonna do Izanami now from Smite. Izanami gets to go in my goat bag. Um, I was carried and I had fun. This character is just good, man. They be doing work. Their damage output's crazy. Their survivability is uh, <clears throat> rough, but. <laughs> Other than that, it's uh, it's pretty fun. Also, this needs to. It's probably fair. Yeah, the survivability is rough, but there's sickle throwing bullshit. You can build attack speed. You can build crit damage. You can build penetration. There's a lot of things you could do with Izanami, and it just works. She's just very, very good. Her kit is naturally strong. Uh, this is my from Blaze Blue uh, BBCF. She can go in. Um, where the fuck is S, bro? I put S with the. Uh, I didn't play enough, but it was super fun. Yeah, it's probably. This is going to be the same. Just slightly below S. She was a good time. Uh, the, the fast movements, uh, slipperiness, and the throwing of the javelin, the lance, is all really, really fun to me. There's not much more to say about that character. Next up, we've got King from King of Fighters uh, 15. They're another King of Fighters as well. But I didn't really play enough of this game. But I do remember that I didn't necessarily have like fun with her per se. She was good. She was reliable. She did a lot of things I really liked at the time. And whenever I was like having a hard time with a specific character that I just wanted to keep out, she was able to make that happen. And she did some pretty good damage. So I never like, I wasn't really drawn to her like design or kit or anything, but it just kind of felt right at the time to play her. So I played her. It was one of the, she was one of my third, like I had a third slot that kind of rotated. She was one of the ones that would rotate from time to time, depending on who I was playing against and all that fun stuff. Um, speaking of, uh, Soul Calibur 2 Link. Uh, this is Soul Calibur 2 Link was my main. And honestly, I don't know if I carried or they carried. I was a child. I never played competitively or anything. But there was a lot of times where it felt like I was putting in a ton of work to play the character. A ton of work to play the character in the dungeon modes and stuff. But I don't know. There was something about whipping out a bomb on Nightmare and like <laughs> his little ah! and he'd like spin in a circle, flash out. It was a good time. I had a good time playing Soul Calibur 2. 
And I fondly remember mashing buttons with Link while uh, progressing through the dungeons and getting levels and the weapons and shit. So yeah, it was fun. And I think uh, I think I carried. I don't know. Maybe they did. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 Psylocke is... This is one of those characters that they were fun. I just did not play enough of this fucking game, man. Yeah, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 has some of the... In my opinion, some of the best like sound effects and like just like audio cues in general. And I think it's because like the arcade cabinets when I played. So it just has like a like a hold over me if that makes sense so i would put this uh, i didn't play enough but it was super fun let's put it right below s i feel like that's fun psylocke's ability to do like the doppelganger thing was fun her ability sets just really cool and she's got that unlimited swagger of an x-men which you always love to see i'm not truly cray though ah i've duped y'all i see Zoe from Grand Blue versus and Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising. This was the first character I tried playing in Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising. It was the last character I tried playing in Grand Blue versus. And it was actually the second one, but the last one I tried for real, for real. And I dropped her as a main. I play her casually. Um, this is one of those we struggle busting through this shit together. I still play her, but holy fuck, every time I play her, I'm like, unplug the stick, take it away from me, uninstall my game. I don't deserve to play this shit no more. Don't get me wrong. She's got good ultimate skills. She's got good tools, but I am just not built to play this character, man. And it, some of her matchups are just fucking miserable to play. <laughs> they're winnable. They're winnable. They're not like so... Okay, here's the thing. When I say they're miserable to play, I'm not saying it's like, oh, it's a 7-3 in the opponent's favor or like, you know, whatever, anything like that. It's just like a lot of work and you're just like, bro, can I please play the fucking video game? So yeah, we struggle busting through this shit together whenever I played her and when I do play her. Yeah, I love me some Zoe though. She gives me major Ramlethal vibes. Speaking of Ramlethal, it's not Ramlethal. It's Giovanna from GGSD. Um, this was the very first character I tried in Guild of Gears Drive. <clears throat> I saw this character was, I, I literally was going through the option select or the character select screen. I clicked on characters and I saw this character had a floating ghost dog behind them. And I said, that looks cool as fuck. Now, if you guys know the story, I used to be a huge Kiba fan from Naruto, right? The whole like fighting with the pet thing always makes me super hype. Problem was, I had no fucking clue how to play rushdowns. In fact, rushdowns break my fucking brain. I struggle with them. Overly relying on strike throw and not like high, low, left, right as a rushdown. I still sometimes struggle with that to this day. So I did try to make them work, uh, but they've forsaken me. And now it's too late. I'll never be back. <laughs> I do play them casually, though, from time to time. Oh, look it. Fuck it. While we're in this tier and talking about Guilty Gear, <laughs> Jacko. I'm still actively, slowly working on this character. Oh my God. There is so much work. I'm trying. Okay, I am. I'm trying to make this work. It's going to take me time. It's going to take me time. This is one of those characters I could probably bulldoze my way through the learning process in like a week right if i just sat down and fucking did it but my willingness my willpower to sit down and just fucking do it is non-existent it's non-existent i'm not trying to do all that man i'm not i'm sorry i'm not that strong so yeah we still play them casually we're still learning a little bit but i i just the combos man just, just getting the neutral in the first place winning the hard knockdown in the first place and getting your setup and then having the setup disappear because of a single burst or because of a fucking because they hit it or whatever. And I was like, bro, shoot me. Actually shoot me. Jack goes a lot to think about at once. Yeah, definitely the mental stack on offense is, is rough with her. Uh, next up, we've got Kirby and Melee. Um, uh, yeah, let's just... <laughs> When I was a kid and I played Melee, I kind of played a little bit of everybody. 
but when I actually tried this game for the first time as an adult, I picked Kirby and I wanted to fucking kill myself. I was like, what am I? I'm not even playing the fucking video game. I spent 90% of the game trying to do something and just dying immediately. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go back to playing Smash 4 now. Thanks for uh, thanks for the friendly, I guess. But I sat there for like 30 minutes while I was waiting for my match and just fucking played this character with somebody. And then I did it again after I had qualified. I just kind of sat down and I was playing it. I was like, man, this fucking game ain't for me. This character ain't for me. I actually, it was so bad. I started playing Dr. Mario for a little bit. <laughs> I was like, bro, fuck this shit. But I do love me some Kirby. And uh, yeah, Melee Kirby just was not for me. <laughs> I was ready to end it all. Same day shipping. For real. Uh, next, I, <laughs> next, I'd like to go back to Final Fantasy and uh, and do Red Mage. Yeah, I'd like to do Red Mage. I don't think I could say this is my main main right now. But I would like to say that I, I feel hella carried on this and I'm and I'm having fun. For sure. Uh, I'm currently playing Red Mage. We got an outfit specifically for Red Mage. I love the outfit. I love Red Mage has been fun. I like splitting the, the magic groups. I need to unlock my heals though. Please fucking level up already and do it. Golly. <laughs> I gotta play the game more to unlock your stuff though there, bud. But yeah, no, it's fun. I, I like casting my uh I don't remember the name of it, but like the neutral shard and then like Casting something else with an insta cast and then procking an insta cast after yeah it's just it's just a good time. Highly recommend trying the red mage if you haven't tried the red mage yet. You forgot about Itmon in Rumble One. He was like a secondary main. It was just funny. He kept crystal move up as a wall even though the enemy could jump over it. Yeah, he was a good time. Itmon was uh was pretty cool. We had to unlock him first. Uh, all right, who's next? Let's do. Let's do Marie from Skullgirls. So Marie in Skullgirls is one of those characters that I've picked solely on aesthetics. The play style does not vibe. Uh, it doesn't feel great. Um, but I'm still playing them. I have yet to drop them. They have not forsaken me. I'm still playing them. I'm still trying. You guys should ask Mod to Pinky in the Brain, Thatcher, uh, how they feel about my Marie. <laughs> I'm sure they'll have some choice words about that character. Um, the way she synergizes with my actual main in this game feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Actually, I'm, I'm, she's not even struggle blossom. She just goes in there, my main, and I, I carried. She's probably really good at the game, but because of how I feel... Nah, it's okay. I'll we'll move back down. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I like the character. I The move set's kind of whatever. I don't know. I like her spirit bomb a lot. I like her Oki pressure a lot. Like I like some of the things she does. I just don't necessarily enjoy playing her, if that makes sense. But I don't want to drop her because I like Marie and I don't want to. I just don't want to drop her, man. But since we're talking about Marie and the team, I got to talk about Annie. I have to talk about Annie. I wanted to save Annie for later because here's the thing. I may not have the most amount of time in Skullgirls, right? I may not be the most experienced Skullgirls player, but out of every single fighting game I've ever played, out of any character I've played across the board in any fighting game so far from what we talked about on this list, no character has felt more right in my hands or more enjoyable to play. I've never felt like I've had more freedom of expression or um a character just like made sense to me than Annie, which is so weird because I don't like playing Shotos. I like playing character specialists, like specialist characters where they do one thing and they do it really well, right? Or um, <clears throat> they have something unique about their kit. And Annie's whole thing is like, she's got a forward momentum move. She's got a fireball, um, like a power wave. And then she's got a DP. Like he's basically a Shoto, except she doesn't play like a Shoto, <laughs> which is hilarious. But she, um, she's got a Kamehameha, she's got a dragon install, got a big explosion type move. She can throw her sword to keep people trapped. Like you can use her fireball for Oki after you've not got a hard knockdown on somebody, right? So when they get up, they just have to block or they get hit, which is super cool. Um, her North Knuckle, her forward moving move is really, really satisfying to land mid combos. 
her forward, her six MP, her six forward medium punch is hilarious when you connect it on somebody as a low because it's a standing low. You're standing, you hit them low though, and it staggers them and you can combo the shit out of them. Her light kick, her standing light kick is one of my favorite buttons in all the fighting games. It's just like, she just like puts her arms out and her sword spins around her. It's a multi-hitting move. Great combo starter, great combo extender. She just kind of does it all. And to top it off, she's got the dope aesthetic. She is a magical girl, automatic points for that. She's got good colors, like good color palettes. She's got twin tails, like twin tail braids. And she's got like a living bunny bag thing that can grab you. Character is a 10 out of 10 in every way, shape, or form, and I love playing as her. By far one of my favorite characters of all time. Also, her ability to mix up with her jumping heavy punch with instant air dash cancels or jumping medium punch, amongst other buttons, is super fun. You can play her a bunch of different ways and quickly switch between them, and it feels great. So yeah, Annie's a good time. Um, and next on the list, let's go ahead and do Clark from King of Fighters. Uh, he's he's just gonna be another one that was I didn't play the, I didn't play the game enough or the character enough but he's I right. he I think he was more fun than King of Dinosaurs and he was more fun than King for me from uh, Tekken Seven he had this like machine gun punch thing that he could like chain into his super he had a lot of different command grabs dude is just a regular military dude that wanted to get his filthy grimy hands on you and squeeze you really hard. And you know what? I respect him for that. He he was out here dealing with some bullshit superpower freaks, and he was just like, suplex. And I'm like, you go, man. <laughs> you do you, brother. That's awesome. I'm happy for you. But yeah, no, nah, I, I, I don't know. He's one of those characters I'd rotate in the third slot for sure. Uh, next on the list, let's do Joker from Smash Ultimate. He... He was one of the characters I didn't play enough, but like, he was all right, I guess. He was fine. I don't know. I, the thing with Joker is like, I did a lot of winning with him, but I wasn't like, I wasn't having the greatest time. Does that make sense? You ever play a character that's like, you're just winning a lot with, right? And you're like, yeah, but this is like, I'm not like having fun while I'm winning. So here's the thing with fighting games, right? Usually a lot of people will equate winning to having fun, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. You should be having fun when you're winning. In fact, if you're not having fun when you're winning, you need to like look into that immediately because it's either a character problem, uh, a game problem, and either way, it's going to burn you out really fast. But you also should be able to have fun when you're just playing the video game in general, right? You should be able to develop that skill where you're having fun playing regardless if you're winning or losing, but that's a whole different point. Joker, I wasn't having fun ever, <laughs> but I wasn't like miserable either. I was just like, yep, that was a Joker round. <laughs> Re-Q. Uh-huh. Yep. That was another Joker round. And I don't know if it's because the motherfucker felt cheap or I don't know. just wasn't an engaging enough play style for me, but I was really excited for him to be in the game. And then as I started playing him, I was like, damn, this shit kind of whack. And I uh, stopped playing him. And sometimes I'll play him casually, but like I'm not I'm not any good with him anymore for that reason. This is Grand Blue Fantasy versus Relink, Cagliostro. This was one of the mains on my team. Uh, and they carried. Yeah, she's just really good. She kind of did everything. She kind of did everything. She could hit enemies from fucking anywhere. She did massive damage. She could carry you through story content. She was great, dude funny fucking personality and dialogue lines big damage great aoe good debuffs good supporting character good buffing moves she just like she literally did it all this is one of those games i wish i played more of i got through the base story and i didn't really do any of the post game content maybe we'll go back i don't know i don't know i'm bummed too because like relink is by like it's super super fun it really is relink is so fun but if i'm gonna grind an mmo or an mmo styled game and this is more of like a monster hunter in my opinion than it is a final fantasy but if i'm gonna do monster hunter relink or final fantasy i'd rather do final fantasy in my opinion 
I just get more out of Final Fantasy. The social aspect's better. I like the graphics in Relink more and like the anime style, but that's not enough. Even the combat I probably like somewhat better. All right. Next on the list, we've got... Fuck it. Let's just do New Wall, man. Enough beating around the bush. Yeah. Yeah, those of you that have uh, been to more of my recent streams, um, New Wall is my spite man. And I carried. It's me. I'm the motherfucker carrying. Sure, if you're... Sure, New Wall's good, right? But out of a lot of the mages that can just do big damage and you don't have to think about it, right? You just boot up and click your skills, you move on. You actually have to use your brain. You actually have to pilot the character and build her smart around the enemy team. You can't just like fucking autopilot build. You can't just autopilot play. And yeah, no, I really, really enjoy playing this character. I think her fog is a wonderful tool for lane clearing, as is her shard. Um, I think the clay soldier into stun off of using the shard to explode your clay soldiers is fucking hilarious. The concept of just murking multiple low health enemies and game feels awesome too. Um, just, just overall play style is super fun. She also has a thing where like when you're auto attacking, if you've auto attacked enough, one every, I think it's like every five hits or something, every five or six, your six or fifth auto attack will root your enemy so they're stunned so she's got like extra cc because if you explode if you throw your clay soldiers on them use the shards that'll also root them and stun them like stun them so you've got like two different stuns on the character you've got big explosive damage you got the fog which can turn you and your allies invisible and buff like you know it, it's just it's a good time overall super fun character fun in arena fun in joust fun in slash fun in conquest is it slash yeah slash is the the two lane Fun and everything. Highly recommend people play her. Uh, unless I'm playing with you, then don't play her. I will. <laughs> it's really that easy. Uh, next up, I would like to talk about Sukuyamon from the Digimon TCG. Sukuyamon as a deck is really fun. Okay. So this is one of my main decks. I have two main decks. Sukuyamon is one of them. Um... It is basically okay so it's basically you're searching for option cards called plugins these plugins come in all of the different colors right so they come in yellow they come in red blue green etc and your goal is to search for these plugins quickly evolve into your sukuyamon maid mode uh or i guess regular either or usually your maid mode first though uh use on american your... soil lethal force engaged appreciate the raid nin nin hopefully you had a good time playing some god of war Hopefully your God of War slapped, you know, slapped some gods when you're going to war as a God of War because you were slapping them with your swords. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you had a good Friday. Hopefully you had a good God of War stream. Uh, for those of you that just swung by, we're going through all of my mains and like things I played and most of the games I spent time in and ranking them. That's what we're doing now. And then we'll do some gaming afterwards, depending on the time. But yeah, so... Sukuyamon is just basically rapid fire these plugins, blow up their security, and then just like win via via that, and it's a lot of fun. And it's getting more support soon, so I look forward to that. Glad you had a good stream, Nin Nin. That's positive. I think next. I think next we gotta talk about Eno. We gotta talk about the the big red hatted witch. This character. <laughs> This character was, um, eh. I, I'm just going to put him in a hat fun. This is one of those characters where there's so many characters in the game that, well, there's ones that did what she did, but better. There's ones that made playing her absolutely miserable. And yeah, it was, it was a rough time. Um, I had fun though, because once you get her offense going, there's really nothing like it in the game. If you can get a hard knockdown, it feels phenomenal. The thing is though, Eno's one of those very few characters in Guilty Gear Strive where she loses on her own offense. She loses on a hard knockdown on her own offense, um, which feels kind of bad. Appreciate the lurk, Nin Nin. Um, now with the system changes that just happened and took place, I feel like a lot of that is remedied. <laughs> So she's going to be a lot more fun to play, uh, a lot more rewarding, I think, going forward. 
we're going to be seeing probably a trend with that. But yeah, no, Eno is a super, super good time. After that, we got Kirby and Smash Ultimate. Um, This will probably be one of the only characters from Smash Ultimate I'm going to put up here on this part of the list. But they were they were probably the closest thing I had to, to like a good... Hmm. Yeah, it's Pirate and Mithra and Kirby, probably. Yeah, they were probably one of my mains. I, I think I had three different mains realistically in this game. I had, the problem with Smash Ultimate is during my 800-ish hours of playtime, I had different mains at different points. And by the end of my playtime with that game, I had no main. <laughs> I uh, I was kind of checked out with that game. But yeah, no, they Kirby was by far one of my longest standing mains in that game. And I, I had to carry. There's so many sorties in that game. There's so many characters that just invalidate Kirby's movement and offense that it, it could be a struggle. I'm not saying they're like bottom three or anything, but they it's, it's a fight to play the video game. But if you get your filthy little mitts on them and you grab them, all of a sudden you're you're doing a lot of work. So super good time there. We should really play Smash Ultimate sometime, uh, all of us. I think that'd be fun. Next on the list, I've got a... We got Renamon from Digimon Rumble Arena. Uh, this was my main, for sure. And I have no idea if I carried or they carried. I'm just going to put them in they carried. Did you, uh, Digimon Rumble Arena, the first one, Renamon's uh, animation on her signature attack, the little ice shard attack, was really, really cool. And I remember my brain being absolutely blown by it. I remember the character just fucking smacking the shit out of the enemies. And I think it multi-hit. I might be lying, but I remember her signature attack, the projectile, doing a lot of work. You could just spam it. Renamon was broken. All right, sick. So I'm not crazy. You know, she felt really good to play. Um, I don't even, honestly, I don't even remember Digivolving uh, that much with her. I just remember spamming her signature attack. Diamond Storm covering a third of the screen and it's delayed, so it has a lot of aerial control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember that move being really, really good. Um, but yeah, no, she was, she was a good time. Next up, we've got, fuck it, we'll do this too. We got Digimon World 3, the powerful pack. Chat, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you right now. Uh, this is just under the, I'm going to put this under good old reliable. It, it, the thing is like, it did a lot of damage and it was like really good at what it did, but I, I still preferred my comfort food, food of the Kumamon maniac pack, uh, over the powerful pack. And then the balanced pack above both of those, I, it's just, I don't know. It's weird. I almost didn't really care about having the Ugamon. It was just having the Renamon and the Monmon that felt really, really good. Honestly. Maybe I'll just put this in comfort. Well, nah, we'll leave here in good old reliable. But yeah, no, it definitely helps solo content though. You know, jumping into lava and doing more swap. Uh, Monmon levels the fastest, has a lot of moves, specifically special damage against certain type of digis. I remember that, yeah. I remember getting shit on Hookmon that would just allow me to one-shot different species, and I was like, all right, well, we, we're gaming. Good times. <laughs> I was like, okay. This is Chun-Li from Third Strike. Um, I, I didn't play enough of the game, but it was fine. It was fine. I wasn't really miserable while playing Third Strike. I think out of all the Street Fighters I've played... Third Strike was the most fun I've had so far. Um, but I think if I were to go back and play it now, I'd probably get insanely frustrated very, very quickly. Uh, the only reason I played Chun-Li, by the way, was because... Well, two reasons. One, Evil Moment 37 with Justin Wong doing the, the kicking parry thing. And then the second reason is because the sprite reminded me of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 Chun-Li, so I just used it. Because I was like, oh yeah, I played this character before. Very different game. <laughs> Very different game. Next up on our list, we got Beetlemon from Digimon Battle Spirit uh, 2. I fucking hated this game. I fucking hated this game. I genuinely hated Digimon Battle Spirit 2. It was a platform fighter. And rather than like knocking people off the screen by like raising their damage numbers, basically you'd hit your enemies and they would drop orbs, and then you would collect the orbs, and then you'd digivolve and kill them. And I never had fun with these games. Ever. 
ever, ever, ever. They were on the Game Boy Advance. And I was happy that I got to play a Digimon game, but I was unhappy that this was the Digimon game I was playing. Never once uh, enjoyed this. And I also didn't like the hybrid Digimon at that point, like at all. So I was really miserable when I got Battle Spirit Saga 2. You played it. You played it on phone emulation in high school with a friend. Whew. You liked it when you played it, huh? Uh, you're stronger than me. That's all I'm going to say. Stronger than me. Next up, we got Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Morrigan. I'm sorry. This character is so fun. This is the... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I like the character, but dislike the game tier for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Something about Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3. So, somebody's got to make me like the game. Mark Shuckleberg's tried. Maybe I just need to play it more on Mark Shuckleberg. I don't know. Game is just not fun to me. I love watching it, though. That's the crazy part. I love watching it so much. I just don't have fun playing it. Um, and again, Morgan's movement and... Just overall, the character I just enjoy playing as them. Next up, we got Roy from Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, I'm gonna fuck what anybody said. Uh, this character was a character that could carry literally anybody. You could turn your brain off, mash Nair and Fair, and you're just gaming. But you know what? There was a lot of fun stuff you could do with the character too. You could also just side me for Ws. But there was a lot of like smart counterplay you could do when you make people whiff punish and use your fast mobility to just like you make them whiff, you whiff pu punish with your fast mobility and blow their shit up. Character was fun. Character was fun, but they were good, so I was carried. Nothing wrong with that. Um, okay. Who's next? Then we've got Bridget from Guilty Gear Strive. This is a character I really I, I put some time in. I tried to make them work. I really like the idea of playing Bridget. I just, uh, they're not for me, man. They're not big enough damage, and I don't feel like the mix-ups they get are are worth it. Honestly. <clears throat> Their neutral doesn't feel great either. <laughs> they're a good character. They're just not for me. That's all. There's just something about Flaming Broadsword that's cool. I agree. We'd like Percival and Grand Blue for sure, for sure. Only other thing with Bridget, her 6H, where she just flies at you with her ass and deletes your health bar with that. That's actually really cool. I do like that. Oh, next one. Digimon Rumble Arena Impmon. Um, uh, uh, I didn't play enough of Impmon. It was all right. I like the thing is like the thing is though I like Impmon, right? I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like Hitmon, but I don't, I don't know. I didn't play a whole lot of Hitmon. I just know that I like Hitmon because I like Digimon. Thank you for the bless. But he, I don't remember having fond memories of ever playing this character. I just know I played him. Speaking of fond memories, fucking Lamau Smash Ultimate. Holy shit. We do a little bit of trolling with donkey kong oh my fucking goodness people hated playing against my donkey kong bro they had so many like early dunk setups and you could just carry them off the ledge and you could bury them in one <laughs> like just tap them with a big move it was a great time and then i think it was super not super armor hyper armor on the up b bro Bro, bro, this character is fucking stupid. Just don't get knocked off the edge. You're fine. You're fine if you don't get knocked off the edge. What are we doing? We're just ranking all the characters I played um, and or mained. Well, not all the ones I played, all the ones we mained. Donkey Kong's way too fun. Oh, it's such a hype character. Hype boss character for sure. Dude, oh my God. <laughs> Landing a uh, flip wave bounce uh, neutral B is always fun. what okay anyways um next on the list we've got wong this is dynasty eight warriors eight character uh they were my main character they had throwing knives and the reason it's actually funny the reason i picked picked up this character was because i was looking online the fastest way to 
uh, grind out for my army to get resources. And they're like, oh, pick an AOE character. And she's one of like the big fucking despicable AOE characters. And she was my main. Absolutely carried me. Absolutely carried me. Every stage would just get ripped through so quickly. Um, that's all I got to say about her. Peso says, movement feels better in Smash to you than any other fighting game. It feels so hard to simply move in other ones. Like, you're stuck in place unless you double tap a ton. It's uncomfortable. So, I would recommend playing a fighting game with a dash button. That might change your mind a little bit. Or also, air dashes. Go, coming from, like, a platform fighter to regular fighters without air dashes feels bad. Did I talk about the biggest regrets already? Yeah, I did. Uh, so next on the list is I forgot who I just did. Let's do Zeta Zeta from Grand Blue Fantasy versus Relink. This was another one of my mains in my party, and they absolutely carried me, and they were very very fun. So Zeta was kind of like a tank role, tank warrior role, but they were flipping and dipping. They would like go up in the air. They'd pogo stick off their enemies. They'd be fucking doing 360s and bay blading down onto them. They could perform a parry and go cha, beat you up. They could do a big old blade beam like a stab attack from halfway across the fucking stage and hit them with that. They could stagger like a motherfucker. Like they did so many things and they had a good buffing ability too. Character was good. It was a lot of fun. Uh, definitely a fun like single target character in my opinion also pogoing off mobs will never not be funny <laughs> like just actually just actually funny let's do last of digimon rumble arena terriermon i think terriermon was uh terriermon was pretty it was like a like a comfort fun uh comfort food no it was, it was fun no i think i just did it because i like terriermon yeah it was like a comfort food I just like Terriermon, man. So I just picked Terriermon from time to time and had fun with him. That's all. It's not that deep. I don't remember a whole lot of Rumble Arena. I just remember playing the game when I was sad. That's all I remember. On to the next one. We've got uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Cyclops. This motherfucker can go in the... I didn't play enough, but it was super fun tier, I think. Me thinks. Oh no, fun, but IDK was going on. Yeah, that's that's probably fun. Go right there with uh Morgan for the same reasons. I didn't play enough of MVC2. I just remember really liking him shooting his big fuck off beam all the way across the screen. Tasso says, unlike you, I actually like Mega Gargomon, the big Gundam dog. That's okay, you could like Mega Gargomon. A silly little goober. Silly little goofball. He just he just looks a little too a little too uh derpy for me. Not in like a good way. There's like there's good derpy and then there's Mega Gargo, in my opinion. Uh next up we got Athena from King of Fighters 15. She is a magical girl with psycho abilities. Uh at that time they weren't considered very good and they were my main. If I ever go back, they would be my main again. Crazy part is they have zone. They're pretty big on like zoning, um, which I'm not the biggest fan of. <laughs> but no, the character was fun. I, it was my first character in King of Fighters that I actually learned like a proper climax combo on. Couldn't perform it now if you asked me to. Also, uh, this is the this character right here is the reason I learned how to short hop to deal with some stuff. So yeah, good times. Next up on the list, I want to talk about Striker from DNF Duel. This is a character that um, I tried to make work, but they kind of forsaken me. There was something about playing Striker in that game, even though they were a top tier and they were really, really good, that I just kind of... It just kind of didn't work out, man. It was tough. It was too tough for me. I really put in a lot of effort and it just didn't fucking matter. I found that I was doing better at mid-range than I was up close in people's faces. So it never never worked out. I always died every time I played him. So, yeah, big bummer. Soul Calibur 6, we got Nightmare. Now, Nightmare is just fucking cool, okay? And Nightmare felt very strong. Nightmare felt very good. I had a lot of fun on this character. Uh, what do I have a tier? I was carried and I had fun, yeah. 
this character was like bro i pressed a button and people fucking died okay there was he has this one move where he like goes uh, he like kind of like hunches in and then goes out really fast like he's doing a, like a super saiyan power up in dragon ball but it's like a red sphere orb emerges from around him and it has a little bit of armor i believe i could be lying but it could ring out and it could also just knock people really far away so you could use your big dumb swinging moves on them shit felt so good go to sleep then um big big fan big fan of nightmare and how they played it was just a great time also the fucking <laughs> his his little rapid headbutt attack always made me giggle a bit i didn't necessarily use it a lot but it was it was silly times uh for the next one we got herda from honkai star rail uh she kind of started the whole hsr thing for me and I used her all the way through Endgame until I started switching to like real teams. I carried with this character. I did the work on this character. They were not good. Their passive fucking sucks. Their guru -guru is not like you have to build your equipment up so much to make her viable. You have to invest so heavily in this character and have a team to support her to make her like really pop off. And for the longest time, I didn't have the units I needed to make her pop off, but we we still made it work. We did we did the work. We did, we made shit happen. So, big fan of her though. Um, thank you for the fond memories. I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's talk about Zerora. Zerora. I can't talk today. This motherfucker was another Pokemon Unite character. Um, they carried me as well. I mean, they were they were my main. I would say more so than Pikachu, and they at the time they did so much fucking damage, bro. They did it all. When I say people melted, they fucking melted. Did I not try Fennekin? Fennekin wasn't in the game when I was uh, when I was playing. I was playing at launch. I wasn't playing. There was like, what, two characters dropped, I think? Oh, wait, was Fennekin in at that point? I don't think they were. I'm trying to remember because I don't remember seeing Fen uh, Del Foxes. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, yeah, no, I, I played at launch for like a couple of months and there was uh, two characters that came out, I think. And then I stopped playing because I was like, oh, fuck this game, man. You made Venusaur and Del Fox. That's a pretty cool combination. Why you play HS her HSR? I don't know what you're trying to ask me. Okay. Yeah, no, but I'm a big fan of the damage dealt here. I think if I were to go back now, I'd have to play one of the evolutions, right? Or like Alolan Ninetales. There's like Glaceons in there, Alolan Ninetales and stuff, but I don't know. Alrighty. Who's next? We got Renamon from Battle Spirit. This was probably my main, and I genuinely don't remember how good they were. So I'm just going to put them in the they carry tier because I feel like that's a safe assumption. But yeah, uh, that's as far as I'll go with that. Actually, I didn't play this game enough. Let's put this down in the. Uh... Hold on, we got to move this down. I know where this goes. This character goes in the I like the character, dislike the game. There we go. Yeah, this was fine. This is another one of those. <clears throat> like Renamon, but I really didn't like Battle Spirit, so, uh, Battle Spirit at all. You know, we could do the same thing with Terriermon since they're right here. Same reasoning. Big fan of Terriermon, but man, sure do not like, uh, do not like that game. Do not like that game. No, sir. Uh, next up, we got May Guilty Gear. May is one of those characters that I actually wasn't doing too bad, uh, too bad with when I made them. There was a, sh a pretty short time for like a month I played May. I actually brought him to a tournament. I did pretty well. Uh, it was the only other character outside of Ramlethal that I brought to a tournament. And um, I would say I had fun. Yeah, I had I had fun. Maybe not more fun than Eno, but she, mm, I had more fun than Eno. Yeah, Eno brought me more stress than May did, but May was, May was definitely fun. May was fun. I love the Totsukeki. Actually, I had so much fun with May. I actually got fight stick art made for May. It's in the Google Drive that I shared in, in uh, Discord. I feel like there's a character missing. Okay, there's not. Cool. We're chilling. 
Uh, next up, let's talk Street Fighter V. So I played, by the end of Street Fighter V, I started with like Luka and some other characters. I ended on Sakura. Uh, as much as I enjoyed playing Sakura, I kind of wanted to kill myself every time I booted up Street Fighter V. I just wanted to wrap my controller cable around my neck, man. She had some fun confirms and like there were moments where I was like, okay, maybe this game's all right. But by and large, I was like, bro, what am I doing here? I genuinely considered never playing fighting games again. I spent 20 hours in Street Fighter V and said, I think I'm good. I think I'm all right. And I never booted up again. In fact, it's now uninstalled. So, yeah, fun, fun stuff there. Next up, we got Kalia of the Vast as far as uh, Magic the Gathering decks go. Uh, this one is, it's got cool archetypes to it, but it was just kind of like a, um, do I have a, I was carried, but it's all right. I'm not seeing, I was carried, but it's I, I have, a, I didn't play, but it was all right. All right. Scary side. Right, let's go. Add below. Boop. Thank you for the sippy sip. I'll take it in a second. Uh, red. I was carried. I was carried, and it was fine. Yeah, it was. I don't know. I like the idea of being able to use dragons, demons, and angels. Let me take a sip real quick. But. I never found myself feeling like I had freedom to play how I wanted with the deck or like I never felt like it was super unique. I never felt like I was doing anything crazy. I was just kind of swinging in with big bodies and using stupid effects to do stuff. Blowing up the board, stealing things, searching for things. It was it was fine. It was fine. I was definitely carried, though. Deck was strong. Deck was strong. Uh, let's scroll back down. Let's go to Dragon Knight for DNF Duel. I know people didn't rate this character have it like super highly, but you know what? I felt like they were pretty good. I felt like they were a pretty strong character. They were, ended up being my main in DNF Duel. I haven't gone back and like tried all the new characters, but um, you know, Dragon Knight for the time I played was a lot of fun, and I felt like they were really, really strong actually. I felt like some of their Oki setups were sick. I felt like their damage was pretty good. And overall, there's a good time. I like the idea of having the pet dragon and like shoot it out to do different shit. I had a lot of that same energy as uh, Zoe from Grand Blue. So I kind of resonated with that. If I could go back and play again, I actually, uh, I might. I might. Who knows? Next up, we got May from Overwatch 1. <laughs> Overwatch 1 iteration, May. This character was my fucking main, and they carried me. They carried me so hard, it's not even funny. This character was a whole-ass war criminal, okay? They, this character should not have been in the fucking... Like, this character should not have been the way they were, okay? The ability to completely freeze a problem character for your team out of the game for a set amount of time was despicable. I could hold the point for so long with May. I could hold the payload for so long with May that even if my whole team had wiped, I would still be alive by the time they got back. I could hold the point for so fucking long. It did not matter what the enemy team did. There was times people legitimately just had to ult me. It was that bad. It was that fucking bad. This character was absolutely despicable. Absolutely despicable. Her headshot on her right click did so much damage. It just like instant killed squishies. This this was this character was overtuned and not okay. Ulti was way too strong. It froze way too fast. Character needed help. But yeah, no, I made him. It was a good time. Great time even. Next up, we got. Let me see something really quick. Da, 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 da. Next up, we got Shelly from Dragon Age. This was a DS game, and it was really, really unique. There was multiple characters you could play as. There was like a little fighting game, mini game. 
Um, but it was an adventure RPG, action RPG, where you'd beat up these monsters and get like new abilities and unlock more stuff. It was a really good time. And Shelly was like the only ice character in the game. And I uh, wanted to play an ice character. She used a bow and she got psh, 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 and like light everything up. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, they were pretty good. They were pretty good. Uh, but I will put them in. I don't know if I was carried or anything, but I definitely had fun with this character. And I look back on this game fondly. I do look back on this game fondly. And I wish that the second game that came out for this got released in the West. I think we deserved it. Uh, I'm assuming numbers didn't do well for the game because I bought it used and it had only been out for like two months and the price was already half of MSRP. So I'm guessing the game bombed here. Uh, next up, we got Milia Rage, Guilty Gear Strive. This is another one of those characters in Guilty Gear, man. They keep showing up. I really wanted to make Milia work. She's up there with Geo and Jacko for me. I tried my darndest and it just, no matter how much I tried, I just, it just never really, I never vibed with it. And even if I go back and I, you know, I lab more combos and stuff, the, the, the setups and all that, I just don't think she's for me. I think there's other characters that do the mix ups and they just do it. They do it better as of right now. I don't know. I mean, her, don't get me wrong. Her mix up game is despicable, but like, there's ones for less practice and less work that can just do it better. Uh, following up that, we got Marvel vs. Capcom 2 Venom. Bro. This character. <laughs> this character, I had fun. This was one of those characters. I didn't play the game enough, right? I did not play this fucking game enough. But this Goomba can go down here with the I didn't play enough, but was super fun. Something about playing Venom, man, just felt right. Dude was like, rah, broom, rah, broom, across the screen, trying to eat you and shit. Who's the wrestler with the dinosaur head? That was King of Dinosaurs from King of Fighters 15. He's in other King of Fighters, too. It was a good time. He does big, big, big damage. Okay, don't drink it. Jesus. Uh, follow up after that we got Kazumon from Battle Spirit Saga 2 also wanted to wrap the controller around my neck with this character I did not enjoy playing as this character did not enjoy playing as Beetlemon I did not enjoy Battle Spirit Saga 2 and I'm gonna leave it at that <laughs> moving on next on the list we've got uh, Sylvie Paula from King of Fighters 15 um, unfortunately I haven't gotten to play a lot of King of Fighters 15 and I didn't get to really play a lot of Sylvie but I would put Sylvie in the I didn't play enough but it was super fun he's got some fun looking movement tools some pretty unique psycho attacks and she's also got that idle look going for her which is always super fun in my opinion so overall pretty fun character just wish I played King of Fighters more yeah King of the Dinosaurs is really cool he's a pretty sick character he's a fun anchor because you can use all of your meter to just like instant kill or just do big damage Good times <laughs> for sure. Uh, let's get our last Marvel versus Capcom 2 rep out of the way. Yeah, Sakura. For some reason, I remember Dark Sakura and I remember that being kind of neat. Um, this, this is going to have to go up here in the fun but IDK what's going on. I don't remember enough about this character to be like, oh yeah, this character is super fun. This is also the reason right here, because I played Sakura in MVC2 when I was younger. This is why I picked, uh, wound up going to Sakura eventually and Street Fighter V. But yeah, no. If I were to go back, I'd like to I'd like to try some of these characters again in MVC2. Next up, let's knock out our last Valorant representative, Neon. This was my main, and I was playing Neon back when she was not great. Uh, I carried this character, and they were they were pretty fun. They were pretty fun. It was a good time. I again, I don't I don't like Valorant as a whole, but this character is probably this one in Omen. I had the most fun on by far, and Neon was the one I always found myself coming back to, no matter no matter who I tried. Movement felt movement felt good. It was the most fun movement in the game, in my opinion. Next up, I've got Mercy from Overwatch 1. 
end of the lifespan of me playing like the last year this character wound up being who the, the character i main because i no longer did dps um no longer did may and mercy was mercy kind of fell off already at this point i'm not gonna lie um but i was also a really competent mercy back then yeah i was a competent mercy i wasn't like goaded or anything but i was competent i i did what i had to do and i did it pretty well i was able to frag out when i needed to and i was able to make sure my team just straight up did not die it was a good time you don't think you were around when i streamed king of fighters you have no idea how it compares to other fighting games fun fact about kof 15 i've never streamed it i only played king of fighters 15 um when i just started getting into fighting games <clears throat> and i picked up strive and i tried kof 15 for like a month while i was also playing strive yep we uh we never streamed it never did the reason I wound up leaving King of Fighters 15 was because on PS5 it was having matchmaking issues and I never played it again. Do I like it as much as Strive? I don't think... Hmm. I'm trying to think if there's a single fighting game that I like as much as Strive. No. Do I like it as much as Strive? No, but that bar is extremely high. However, do I love King of Fighters 15? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because like, okay, so you got like Mortal Kombat and like um mortal kombat street fighter and king of fighters are like your traditional 2d fighters right those are like the big ones i would say out of all of them i don't like any of them except king of fighters <laughs> that's the only one i like actually like oh yeah we like king of fighters out here it's a good time i i don't like how long the combos are sometimes i don't i don't really enjoy that but playing it casually feels really really fun to me that's not a game. I don't think that's a game I would sit there and grind because it is a 3v3. It's not like a tag fighter. It's, you know, you and your opponent's first point character get a bar of health. When one dies, your first point character fights their second one and so on and so forth. But the designs in KOF, yeah, I agree. The designs in KOF are really good. The stages are cool. The abilities are fun. It's just, I don't want to put the kind of time into KOF it requires to play it at like a decent level. Um... At least not right now. Next up, I got Ganondorf from Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Not even Smash 4, but this character was... I had fun. <laughs> I had fun, man. This character was pretty darn fun. The, you know, there's just something really satisfying about getting a shield break off of your up tilt. And then going into neutral B or some bullshit, right? There's something really satisfying about hitting his down air. Some satisfying about using short hop back airs. Like the dude's just a good time. You know, he's just fun to do for a few casual rounds and move on with your life. I can't complain. I can't complain. Next up, I want to talk about <laughs> I want to talk about Ryu from Street Fighter 6. Ryu from the streets. Ryu from the streets. Um. Uh, la, 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 la. I don't have that much time in this game, right? But I feel like Ryu to me is kind of just good old reliable. He anti airs pretty well. He's got some decent damage. I like his fireball Oki. I like his throw loops. He just feels good. You know, he just feels good to play. I don't think I'd want to main him, main him. Uh, if I ever, like, spent more and more time in Street Fighter Six, But I think, like, his basic, you know, hit confirm combo structure feels good. I think his hits, when you hit somebody, they feel like they have hella impact. And it's, like, really rewarding. Um, I do like his really basic combo, the uh, the two medium kick. Are the, yeah, the crouching medium kick into meal kick EX into Shoryuken. I think that's really fucking satisfying. Um, so yeah, overall, I think he's I think he's a lot of fun. I think if I were to play him more, I'd want to learn more of his. Uh, it's not the Hadouken, but it's like the the force palm attack. I want to learn more conversions off of that. Yeah, now he's got he's got some sauce in, in Street Fighter Six, and I think he's a good time. 
Um, let's talk about Tekken 8 Elisa. Uh, if I were to play Tekken 8, this is probably the character I'd play for now until, until more stuff's added. I don't necessarily think she's like super fun or anything, but it's just nice to like boost around with her jetpacks and pull out the chainsaws and hit some people. She's got some good pokes. She's got some armor. She's a little ignorant. So yeah, no, she's just comfort food. I just want to mash some buttons in Tekken 8. That's uh, that's who I want to mash on until Eliza's back. <laughs> if Eliza ever comes back. Ultimate Marvel Capcom uh, Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3. This is going to be the first character from this game where even though I didn't put enough into the, enough time into the game where, where did I put them uh I lost them already I had so much fun playing Akuma in Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 this character is an absolute nut a minute bro he just be doing all the shit he just be doing stuff bro you press any button and you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this shit, nice. I'm tight as fuck. That's just how Akuma feels in that game. Now, granted, you get hit one time and you're fucking dead, but no, 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 the character's really, really fun. Big damage, lots of crazy shit. Super fun character. <laughs> He's so funny, man. Seeing DW3 sprites in general makes you want to do something Digimon related. Ah, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. It's time to boot up DCGO, buddy. Um, next up we've got Sora from Smash Ultimate. This one's tough. I I really wanted them to be my main, but it just didn't happen. It just didn't work. This is this is probably the first Smash Ultimate character that felt. Uh, really bad that I couldn't man and I wish I could have yeah no we tried we tried I could do the things I could do some of the things but the more I played them the more I was just like why I could just go play Pyramithra I could just go play Cloud did I put Cloud in here it'd be really awkward if I didn't whoops my bad yeah Cloud was supposed to be in here Whatever, it's fine. My B. Um, okay, so Cloud and Captain Falcon both go in the same spot, in my opinion. Okay. Um, where are we? I was carried and have fun. I played a, a good amount of both Cloud and, um, yeah, a good amount of Cloud and good old captain falcon we actually used to do we used to do a good amount of dittos when it came to captain falcon for fun sets me and mark schokoberg it was a good time cloud was one of those characters i would just learn random tech for because i don't know it was fun cloud had some interesting stuff with his limit break and if you wanted a ledge guard you could do like uh, wave bounce turn around blade beam into the ledge and then when they tried to recover they would just die because they'd get hit by the multi-slash it was crazy i mean dr proctor the car driving doctor you do what now <laughs> ew cloud what do you mean by that hold on now hold on now but yeah no captain falcon was always hype so yeah they were both super fun next up we got sofita from street fighter 6 this actually wound up being my main and I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I'm sure the character is really good, but I felt like I was working for that shit every time I played him. I also didn't know combos. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I Every time I boot up, I forget how to put lightning on her shit again. So it's like I'm, I'm constantly fighting for my life every time I play this character. But they're my main. I would say 2B could be my main, but again, I, I don't put enough time in that game. So I have no fucking clue. Game's cool though. So Caliber 6 is sick, and the fact that we're not getting another one probably ever makes me sad. Oh, I forgot to put Dead or Alive in here. Ugh. It's okay. It's okay. We don't need to put Dead or Alive in here. No biggie. You're still mad Cloud won over Black Mage as the icon of the series in general? Yeah, I understand the sentiment, but 
let's face it, it's like the whole like Charizard is Charizard and Pikachu being an icon over like other Pokemon thing. They're just a fan favorite, so they're gonna they're gonna get the spot. It had a massive impact on the series. Um, okay, so next up is Jam from Guilty Gear Xrd Rev 2. I did not play enough of this game, but let me tell you what. This character is so fucking fun, bro. So she's got like little power-ups she can do for her different specials. You don't even you don't even really give a fuck about that. You're just you're like swinging on them. You're dashing. You're dashing at them. You're punching them. You're kicking them. You're leaping all over the place. It's a good time. Uh, you're chaining your specials together. Such a good time. I, I, I'm not even going to elaborate on it, bro. It's just some dumb restaurant owning goofy ass person that just kicks the shit out of you. Good times. Definitely try them. Next up. <laughs> uh, this is getting harder. I want to. I don't know. Next up is Chun Li from Street Fighter 6. This character was, uh, I don't know. We kind of, we struggle busting through this shit together. I don't think this character was made for me. I don't think this character was fucking made for me, man. I could win with her. I got to gold with a day in her after throwing all my placement matches, but <laughs> this character is a good character. They're a strong character, but they are not made for me. Okay. They're just not fucking made for me. I could put this down in the not made for me tier, but I, I think this is probably just better suited here for reasons. I do like her level two super into air combo, though. That feels that feels really good. Uh, next up, let's do Mario from Smash Ultimate. This character, I don't give a shit what anybody says. They're just good, man. They're just good fun. They're good fun. They can let you troll. They can let you, um, yeah, they can let you troll. They can let you play serious. You can just get laddered up off the screen. You can just dunk on people. You can kill them with a water gun. I used to constantly use my water gun on Mark Schuckelberg and other people I played with for funsies. I'd literally be in neutral. I'd run up and I'd just water them. I'd use the the squid, the squat, the, the, the I can't remember its name. The flood. Jesus. Yeah, flood. I would flood them. I'd <laughs> flood him as much as I could. It was a good time. Love me some Mario. Can't go wrong with playing Mario in uh in Smash Ultimate or Smash 4 for that uh, for that matter. Uh okay. Next up, let's finish our Magic the Gathering. We got old stick fingers uh as a commander deck. This is a turn two deck. <sighs> Even with interaction. <laughs> uh I carried this deck. The piloting of this deck could be pretty pretty difficult. That's why I said I carried. You might notice it's in black and green, which is uh, slightly problematic because usually the decks you're going to be running against with this deck have a lot of interaction. And you're usually winning turn two if you're going to win, but you can try for game every single turn from turn one to turn four. And if you get shut down, you get shut down. But your average win rate is going to be on turn two. If you're not winning turn two, then you're fighting for your life all the way to turn four. Um, there's multiple ways to win with the package you have in here. You're either going to be swinging in with unlimited squirrels or you're going to be draining their life with like an infinite uh, combo from a creature effect by using spells. There's just different ways to do it, but it's it's a lot of fun. The loop revolves heavily around, obviously, your graveyard um, and exiling cards. So it's, I don't know, it's a good time. But it's, out of all the CDH decks I've ever played, it's one of the more fragile ones. And if people know what they're doing, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to dismantle. So you got to be, you got to be piloting it really good or you better hope they have no answers to you. But yeah, no, I got a lot of wins under my belt with that one. Good times. Uh, next up, we got Leona from King of Fighters 15. She is a charge character. I infamously do not like playing charge characters. However, um, this character was fun to play. This character was fun to play. So I'll give it to her that she was fun. Uh, actually, I'll say it was fun, but I don't really know what was going on because back then I couldn't charge with charge characters like really at all. But I still had fun using her pokes. I still had fun with her like transformation where she got red hair. So I'll put her in fun, but I don't know what's going on. 
that's fine for me. Um, all right, let's do another fighting game character. Soul bad guy. This character right here is, um, I'm carried, but having fun. Okay. I may not know my combos on soul. I may not know what the fuck I'm doing, but this character is just stupid. You're constantly positive. You have insane amount of active frames on your moves. You had a meterless DP for the longest time. I mean, it's gone now, but one of his supers is useless, but who fucking cares with everything else he's got? Insane movement tools. Holy shit. The dude's got movement tools for days. He's got Gunflame, Fafnir. He's got low profiling moves. He's got his, his 5k. Holy shit. The startup, the reach, the extensions. My man can do it all. And let's not even talk about his insane, his clinically fucked up damage. Bro is fun. Bro is fun. And all I want to do is make you guess strike throw with this character. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, there's so much more I could be doing with him. Arcrid from uh, Melty Blood Type Lumina. I have yet to put more time into this game, but when I played it on PS4, I believe, I played through the story and did a bunch of stuff with her. Um, she was my main. I have no idea if I was carried or not. Um, but I'm just going to say that she's good. Cause she was a like rush downer type, and I felt like she was pretty darn fucking, pretty darn fucking strong. Multi Blood Type Lumina is a phenomenal game. I think it's got a lot of really good mechanics. I think its characters are really fucking cool. If I went back, I'd probably play like Aoka or the the Beast Girl with the swords. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd probably try both Arcrids. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Fucking Rufal Monger says Arcade, but I'm pretty sure that's because he's memeing. I have no idea how to say her name. Arquid is how I'm just going to say it. <laughs> but I really enjoy her. She's super fun. You love Melty Blood? Hell yeah. See, it's why, this is why I love streaming. Because I can just find more people that like fighting games. I can talk about it with them. And like play it with them. Same thing with like Final Fantasy and Digimon. I just basically get to like find people that like the things I like. It's so free, bro. It's the freest tech. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> um... Let's talk about Smash Ultimate Yoshi. Oh, me, oh my. How the mighty have fallen. So I mained Yoshi in Smash 4, but going to Smash Ultimate, he just kind of, like, they just lost a lot of the stuff that felt good. I, like, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. This character, this character had... This character had issues. Again, it's a sorty heavy game, but I don't know. I carried and and I had fun. It's a sorty heavy game, so he just had a like a really hard time doing some of the stuff he wanted to do. His swallow ability wasn't really as good. His I can't remember if it was his back air or his down air that no, his down air was good in ultimate. I think his back air was kind of broken. There was a lot of times that didn't work as intended. Uh, the sweet spot on forward air was a bit better, but it didn't feel as like strong, if that makes sense. His, oh my God, his up air. Oh no. Yeah, his up air got shit on. And that was like really important in the last iteration. His throw combos weren't as reliable. There was just, there was a lot of stuff that, you know, but he was still good. He was still good. I still had fun. He just wasn't nearly as strong as he was before. And even back then, he wasn't super strong. Okay. Now we're getting into the meat and potatoes chat. So I thought about putting Pichu on this list from Smash Ultimate because when Smash Ultimate came out, Pichu was the very first character I played um, and tried to main. But that lasted about a month. And I was playing other characters during that time. The reason I put Peach in place of Pichu is because I'm really, really proud of what I accomplished on Peach. Um, Peach was very, very strong, right? And I mained Peach for a decent amount of time, but I actually got really good at float canceling. Like a lot of her tech, I started doing and I got really, really good with it. Um, maybe not good enough to win like locals or tournaments or anything, but I was still learning the game, getting better at the game. And I was really, really enjoying my time on Peach. 
Uh, I had a really, I did really well at like edge guarding with her. My conversions were solid. It was just like, it was overall a good time. And I'm really proud of what I did when I played her. So for that reason, I'm going to put her in the, they were my main, they carried. She was just a good character. She was a character that people constantly put in high tier for years because he has potential. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he has potential. He just, uh, like, if he existed in the game where a lot of, like, strong characters didn't exist that just, like, countered him really hard, yeah, he'd be great. But there was just a lot of, like, strong sorties or characters that just had better aerials and just kept him out forever. That was, like, his main issue. Um, okay. Okay. Next up, let's talk about Mai from King of Fires 15. I think they need to go up with Athena. This character and Athena pretty much always were on the same team. I paired them together always. Remember I said I had my first, second, and then my third was kind of up in the air. Yeah, these were, these were my number one and my number two. Uh, just had a lot of fun with them. I liked Mai's air mobility. I liked her ability to just get in, get the job done, get the fuck out. She, both her and Athena, I felt like I could put in point, in mid, or in anchor. I felt like they could all cash out pretty well. I felt like they could all generate a meter well, like a battery. I usually put Athena in first because she was a fucking battery character. You're just, ba -da, ba -da, psycho ball. like, you're just throwing energy balls at people generating meter. Mai could cash it out and use it for stuff, um, but also still generate for the third slot. I never had a reliable anchor, which is such a bummer because like, I don't know, maybe I would have, maybe I stuck around. Inkling was also kept in high tier, even though every Inkling main stopped painting Inkling. Yeah, that's crazy to me. I never saw Inkling. Personally, mentally, I never really put Inkling in like a high tier. It's some high tier stuff, but like, I don't think they were high tier. All right. We're getting down to some of the mains that, uh, that made me that I kind of skipped over. Let's talk about UL from Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising next. I, Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising on released, on release, uh, wow, that was... That was a hard adjustment for me. <laughs> I picked up Zoe and I was struggle bussing. I felt like not having, I, I felt like if you wanted to play that game because of the dash light and because of near and a lot of like Siegfried and shit, you needed a meterless reversal. I really felt that way. I no longer feel that way, but I did feel that way for the longest time. And that led me tr to trying out Catalina. It led me to trying out Jita and it led me to trying out Vera, all of which I still enjoy and I would play casually just like I play CAG casually. However, it led me to trying out UL because UL also had uh, something kind of unique where she could use some of her specials to uh, basically keep her turn on block. Some of her specials were pretty positive and she could just continue her offense. A lot of characters didn't really have that. The thing with UL though, is that every single one of her specials that would allow her to stay positive and keep her turn had really big counterplay. So if you were playing against literally anybody who knew, <laughs> who knew, which it didn't take much to know, like it was very, very easy counterplay to her stuff. It became a very deep game of adding to the opponent's mental stack and making them guess which one you were going for. Some of them were more reactable than others. Like her leap back and forward, you could react to, but you essentially had two options for that leap, but they needed to guess which one you're going for. Um, UL's pressure at higher levels isn't great. I'm going to be honest with you. So, but there's ways around it. But I think when you were right, right? And your opponent was wrong. You were just like, I can't stop winning. Like it felt so good. Uh, but she definitely, she had her problems. She, she sure did. But I, this is a character, this one in Beatrix, I will probably main until the game's end. Honestly, I don't see myself switching off. There's too much loyalty there now. I'll play other characters casually, but I really, really like playing you well. And I do, I do enjoy Beatrix quite a bit. Okay, we're down to the final five. And I would like to say before we get into the final five, I just want to point out a few things. Out of all these characters on this list, I'm not, I'm not talking about Dizzy Strive because she's not out yet. 
out of all these characters on this, these were like my true mains, right? These top two, these top two tiers. The ones that really defined me and made me, because they had such a profound impact on what I do now, is we're talking about Charizard and Yoshi from Smash 4. And then we're talking about Annie from Skullgirls. A lot of these other characters that like I mained, like Tekken 7, I put 60 hours into the game, but it was all just button mashing. You know what I mean? It was like 80 hours, all button mashing, getting the platinum. I wasn't like that serious about the game. Um, New Wa, I'm never going to find a character like New Wa in another MOBA again. I also thought about putting Eternal Return on here, but I don't have enough time in there to really say anything. Honkai Star Rail had a profound impact on me, but I, I've sworn to myself I'm going to avoid gotchas at all cost, unless it's a really specific gotcha, which then maybe I'll give it a chance. King of Fighters 15, again, I don't have that much time in, so I can't really say too much. Like, you know, like, <laughs> Digimon Rumble Arena, Renamon, I was a small child, same thing with Dynasty Warriors, but as, like, current me, and, like, the games I play and the things I do, Annie, UL, uh, Yoshi and Charizard and even Kirby Smash Ultimate uh, no not Kirby yeah these ones Smash 4 not Ultimate these all had like a really profound impact on me and you know what I what I play and how I want to play and I'm hoping Dizzy will will have the same for me that being said these five all have a story every single one of these means something to me so I've told this story a bunch of times, so I'm going to try to keep it short to avoid putting y'all to sleep, but I played, I, I didn't really play fighting games, right? Growing up, I'd play fighting games super casually. I'd fuck around. I'd bash some buttons. I didn't understand what teching a throw was. I didn't understand what teching a knockdown was. I didn't know what the fuck a dragon punch motion was. I didn't know any of this shit. Okay. I didn't know any of this shit. Now, fast forward several years, uh, college-ish. A little past college, I got into Smash 4. Smash 4 was the first Smash game that I said, hey, I uh, I want to play this game and I want to get better at it. I don't want to just mash buttons anymore. <laughs> I don't want to just mash buttons anymore. I want to be good at this game. That was Smash 4 for me. Right? But still, no traditional fighters, no 3D fighters. None of that made me feel that way. Fast forward, Smash Ultimate comes out. I've got like 4K hours on Smash 4. I'm playing Smash Ultimate. I got like 800 hours. From day one of Smash Ultimate, all the way till when I decided to stop, I found myself feeling very little joy. I'd have fun with playing with friends, but I constantly felt like the game, the net code was bad. The hitboxes and hurtboxes felt like dog shit. The removal of perfect pivot really hurt my feelings. I don't know why I never got over that. Movement in the game didn't feel the greatest. I like the UI, I like the UX, I like the amount of characters. But my number one issue with the game was I could never find a main I wanted to play. I, and like stick with and really work at and get better at. Um, I found a bunch of characters, but I never found like one specific character. And that sucked. And why is Zelda not here? I thought I downloaded Zelda's PNG. Zelda was also... Smash 4 Zelda was uh, I carried and I had fun. Okay, there you go. You're welcome. I don't know why it's not here. But from there, Mod Mark Shuckleberg uh, one day was like, let's try Uni. And I was like, word, I guess. And I looked at it. I was like, yeah, it, it looks all right. But I was interested because I liked the art style and that was, that was really about it. And in that time, you know, I, I tried, I tried a few characters. Nothing really stuck with me. But I went into the training mode with Batista and I pressed a combination of buttons and she stuck her fingers out like finger guns and said pew 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 and did like a shooting motion and energy blast came out of her fingers and I was like this is the sickest fucking thing I've ever seen. So ever since then I was like alright I'm gonna be a Batista main. What the fuck is a charge input? <laughs> Wait what the fuck is this? So Mod Mark Schuckelberg has to explain to me what a fucking charge input is. And then apparently there's something called charge petitioning, where she'll throw out 
uh, little diamonds after she does some negative edging. I'm like, what does all this mean, brother? And I was just like, I was not having it. So all I did was use her charge motions, flash kick the shit out of people, shoot orbs out of my hands, and shoot lines of beams. Like, that's all I did. And I was having a good time. Yeah, negative edging. So doing a negative edge in fighting games is when you press and hold a button and then for a certain amount of time, and then when you let go of the button, it does an action. So for example, in Batista's case, if you do, let's say, an attack, right? You do like a combo, you do an attack that knocks down the enemy, you just hold the button, you hold down the heavy or whatever. And then when you let go, it'll throw like a little diamond up. So for her, she wants to hit the diamond, do little explosions or whatever. Some other characters like uh, Zotto 1 from Guilty Gear, if you press and hold the button and then let go, it'll do stuff with his puppet character. So it just depends on the game. It's just another input method. Method. I hate negative edges. You love Batista, but your brain cannot function playing her. Uh, understood. <laughs> totally understood. This character, for me, in Uni 1, uh, oh, 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 oh. I was carried head on. Uh, this character was, I was never playing this at a point where I would be carried or not, but Batista could not be counter hit. Lamau. Um, but yeah, they were my main, they carried and you know what? I, I had a good time. It was a good time. We loved, we loved what we did there. Batista, Batista opened my mind up to true fighting games, like actual traditional fighting games and anime fighting games. And because of her, I found uh, Guilty Gear Strive. But before I found Guilty Gear Strive, I had a copy of Rev 2 on my PlayStation that I tried out. And Dizzy's design instantly got my attention between the demon and the angel wing thing and the tails and the twin tails. And I, um, I assume she's really good. And the instant kill drew me in automatically just automatically i was just there i was like boom this is the character this is the fucking character you know so i was like fuck it we're gonna get strive <laughs> and we got strive we tried geo geo didn't work out for me we uh yeah so this is this was the progression you ready we tried geo geo was not working out for me i was getting like fucking twerked on every two seconds and then I picked up, uh, it was one round, one round, one round. I picked up Nago, <laughs> picked up Nago Ryuki. I went online. This fucking dirty ass Ramlethal player threw their swords at me, made me explode. I fucking died. I was like, this bitch does too much damage. Fuck this character. I'm never playing them. Instantly, I was corrected. The windscreen pops up and she gets a dog that jumps on her and licks her face. It was the cutest fucking interaction. I was like, you know what? She's got a pretty cool design. Let me try this bitch. I picked up Ram. Never in my entire life. Have I played a character that did like that mid range bullshit so well? They were my main. We clicked. We clicked. I learned so quickly that I valued the most oppressive, despicable, criminal G Geneva Convention law breaking, have an ass corner pressure ever. I was like, listen. If I can just keep them blocking for a million seconds, this is the best. And Ram was so much fun. I got so much hate for playing this character. I actually started disliking the character. Nobody would ever be like, oh, GG's man, good match. It was always, you only won because this your character's fucking stupid or is broken or this one button or whatever. Oh, you play like a lame bitch. It was never like, damn, you got me. I never carried that energy for people. I would complain that like there's certain people, they'll say something to me and then I'll complain about their character back because I'll be like, nah, your character's got some fucked up shit. Shut your stupid, filthy fucking mouth because it gets on. Like now, now that I've grown as a fighting game player, if you come at me sideways about my character because I won, I'll hold that shit over your head forever. I won't let that shit go till you apologize. 
if you're like, oh, I hate fucking this fucking character, blah, blah, blah. No, you hate fighting me, bitch. You hate fighting me on this character. That's your problem. So now I just like reciprocate the energy and I give it back to them until they shut up. I, I have this issue with so many people. It drives me up the fucking wall. But anyways, I got a little sidetracked. Ram locked the fuck in for me. Because of Ram, I spent hours honing, honing my craft. I learned how to play neutral. I learned like, okay, this is what, okay, stagger pressure? Wow. I didn't even know that was a fucking option. I learned what a tick throw was. I've never heard the fucking term in my life. And I learned how to implement it into my game plan. I learned how to fast RC cancel so I could do instant overheads. I learned so many things just to play this one character better than I did the, the, the day before. I learned the difference between a regular combo and a counter hit combo and why you should do them differently sometimes. Like there's just like so many things I spent hours doing. I started VOD reviewing myself. I'd watch my own gameplay back just to get better. I'd start watching other people's gameplay to see if they were doing anything better than me. I started attending online tournaments and I got fucking destroyed the first time because um, I wasn't any good. I actually have a notebook I kept where I wrote down, okay, today's my plan. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to uh, air grab more people when they jump out of this specific sequence, right? And then I would write down what matchups I played. I played this matchup, they were this level, um, did I do the thing? And I would do a check mark if I did the thing, right? And I would just keep doing that. And I just keep doing the shit every single day. And I improved really, really fast because of it, because I was constantly like, I would play the game. I'd practice the same, whatever thing I was working on. I'd practice it for 15 minutes. Then I'd actually just go play the game. I'd keep notes. I'd reflect. I'd watch my VODs. Like it was a whole thing. And the passion I feel for the FGC now would not exist if it wasn't for the time I spent with Ram. And I don't even know why I'm tearing up a little bit. Um, the amount of people that I've met, the cool shit I've gotten to do, like, I don't, I genuinely believe that I would not be streaming today if it wasn't for Guilty Gear Strive. But like, I know it's like really over dramatic and it's like super extra when somebody says X video game changed my life, right? But there's no other way to word it. Without Ramlethal and without Guilty Gear Strive, <laughs> I would be in a very much different place in my life. That is a fact. So yeah, go out and play some fucking Guilty Gear. Shoutouts to Guilty Gear. Golly. Next up, I want to talk about Minervamon from the Digimon TCG. Um, this deck fucking sucks. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, there was a time where Minervamon loops was really, really good. And, um, it was, <laughs> it was pretty good. So essentially what you would do is you would, there was a card called Cerberus Mon. There's two different variants of it. There was Cerberus Mon Werewolf Mode, which had Rush. And there was another one, and they're both ultimates. I would say on deletion, uh, draw two, draw two, discard one. And Minerva Mon's whole thing, and then it got retaliation and all that. And then it, whenever your opponent plays a Digimon, you could play a level four or lower purple Digimon from your trash to the field, right? Um, but the big effect was on deletion for Minerva Mon, if your opponent has two or less Digimon, you can play a Digimon. Um, a little, I think it's level five or yeah, level five or lower Digimon from your trash to the field or a Mervamon, and Mervamon has a whole different list of effects. I'm not gonna get into that right now. But basically, there was a Revive from the Darkness option card you could play. It was a four cost card. It says, delete a Digimon, play a level five or lower purple Digimon from your trash without, uh, and don't activate any on play effects. So what you would do, the loop essentially was, you'd play Mervamon, you'd swing in with it, or not, if you were afraid it would die. But you would, uh, You'd use Revive from the Darkness on Minervamon with both Cerberus Mon in your trash. Minervamon would die. Boom. Death trigger. And then you would do all your resolve what you need to for the inheritables first. And then Minervamon, you would go, bam, take um, Cerberus Mon regular 
or yeah, take the Cerberus Mon regular mode with the uh, Revive from Darkness effect, play that. Use Minerva Mon's recursion effect on the Cerberus Mon werewolf mode. That one comes into the field and it says rush, so it can attack immediately. And then it says you may delete a Cerberus Mon. Uh, if you do, gain nine uh, memory. Well, it's a nine cost card. So you would delete the other Cerberus Mon that you just brought back, draw, you know, draw two, discard one, and you'd gain nine memory off the Cerberus Mon. So you'd spend four, mon four memory on Revive from Darkness, right? And then you'd gain nine memory off Cerberus Mon. So that would put you at a net a positive of five. And also if you spent the three on Minerva Mon, okay, well then, you know, you're only gaining two, but you could loop it. You could do it again, because then you could evolve into Minerva Mon for three, Revive from Darkness, and then just keep doing it and you just keep uh you just keep level you just uh keep getting memory and then you can like set up your board to be really really super degenerate and it's a great time the song is called next to you by wisu <laughs> i don't know what that is um but yeah super good time love the deck and then mervamon just kind of adds to it because it lets you bring even more stuff to the field uh, just a big fan of the overall play style of it. There's better recursion decks out there. There, there. there always will be, I'm sure. But I will keep trying to make the deck work forever. Uh, I'm not going to let it go. I just can't. It's too fun. It's too fun. But yeah, I, I carried that fucking deck for the longest time. And then I just uh, kind of let it die. Okay. And last but certainly not least, L Fell Valentine. Now this is a this is a weird one to place, and here's why: because Elfel right now is much much stronger than she was uh, at the end in, in patch three. Okay, there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is the system mechanic changes with no more DPRC really buffed her. And the, the wild assault changes where there's no hard knockdown on a wall break kind of buffed everybody. <laughs> uh, everybody who was struggling. Her bomb pop-up pop up kind of ruins some of the freedom to her combo routes. And I don't know, there's there's some things, but giving her a four frame 2P uh, for a normal was an insane buff. Um, so she's she's better now. I still think, oh, Ram needs to go and they carried. I don't know what she's doing down here. I don't know what she's doing down here. I still think right now with Elfel, I don't know. Maybe maybe Elfel carries. It, it, it's too soon for me to really say either way if she carries or I carry in the current uh, in the current patch. But before I definitely had to gap. I had a gap. She was like bottom four. Character was not good. Character was struggle bussing. She's she's better now, but she was definitely struggle bussing. But she she came in at a good time where. I had already been taking a break from the game because of netcode issues and I was still feeling kind of down and out about everybody being little bitches about my RAM. So she came in at a good time. Now people fucking hate playing against this character. So I kind of lost out there anyways. <laughs> like either way, I kind of just got to hold that L. But um, yeah, no, she's super fun. Her windscreen where she screams is amazing. That's why it's my follow alert. Right, whenever someone follows, it pops off, and I love that. But yeah, no, that is that's everything, chat. But we did it. Yippee! There's a lot of characters here, you know, some with some with more significance than others. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy to pretty pretty happy to most of these characters for what they provided me, especially to Ramlethal Valentine. I, and honestly, like, I would put Ram even higher. I'd put Ram here if Annie didn't feel like they fit like a glove. But emotionally, Ram belongs here. Emotionally, Ram belongs in my number one spot. And, and <laughs> that's why sometimes I joke where it's like, Lamau, maybe I won't play Dizzy. But I know I will. I'm going to play Dizzy when she drops. But Ram will always have a special place in my heart because Ram is the sole reason why I got as far as I did uh, with streaming. And with everything, this is like legitimately all because of Strive. I, if it wasn't for Strive, I would have quit streaming. Uh, quit doing it as consistently a long time ago, because I didn't find my footing as a streamer or as a content creator uh, for a little while. It took a second. Welcome to the stream, Derek. Thanks for swinging by. 
hopefully your Friday is going well. But yeah, that's that's all for me on the tier list. I appreciate everybody for listening to me ramble on about characters I played and you know how why I played them, how I enjoyed them, kind of thing. Hopefully this wasn't too painful. <laughs> oh man. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. You stinky little shitter. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. Yeah.